You could have heard this episode 48 hours early on our Patreon, patreon.com slash IndieHeadsPodcast. But join us for as low as $1 a month, you'll receive episodes early and gain access to our Discord server. All of our upcoming episodes will be up on our Patreon 48 hours before it hits our public podcast feeds. But if you're hearing this through our Patreon feed, we thank you so much for your support. We especially want to thank our Real Ones patrons, including Becca and Tien, Georgia Mikowski, Josiah Duncan, Jenna LaFleur, Graham McSpooky, Old Man Withers, Jackson Christ, Alex Grichmanoff, Mark Barry, Aaron Hillsamer, Darian Fisher, K Horse 420, Cal 50, The PP Doo Doo Man, Chris Wade, Jacqueline Kataga, Alec Felder, Jake Wald, Eraser Head Baby, Selectric, Rob Marino, Max, Dylan, Waffle 113, Noah Kurtz, Toyota Serafino, Maze Farms, and Derek Pemberton. To become a real one, consider supporting us with a $5 a month donation, or receive bonus episodes every month, and get a shout out at the top of the pod. Anyways, though, enjoy the episode. All right, my friends, I've gathered you all, of course, we're about to celebrate a very special holiday, all of us together, and I'm just going to go around the table, you know, this, it's a special, it's a special holiday, and I just want to know, you know, what you're all thankful for. So Jackie, uh, what are you thankful for on this special Thanksgiving? Uh, on this Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, I'm especially thankful for uh, uh, Slitherman. Um, for for teaching me things about uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and many other important topics, really, really opening my mind to a new philosophy of life and wanting to do more drugs. So, th- so I'm thankful yeah. for Slitherman this year. Yeah, uh, Ethan, what what are you thankful for this Thanksgiving? Um, I'm thankful for prescription um, strength cortisone for my own <laughs> private reasons. <laughs> mm. Max, uh, what about you? What are you thankful for? I'm thankful for my friends, family, hi-fi music, and white women. <laughs> uh, and, and Jake, what are you thankful for? I'm thankful for the Indie Heads Podcast Discord server, now available for anybody <laughs> who'd like to join for $1 a month. Wow. I, I was going to say that. I was I was going to say that. I'm thankful to all of our beautiful Patreon supporters, you know, just, you know, we've, we've, uh, we've had the Patreon open for, for, uh, I think this is coming out like right before the one year anniversary of the, uh, the, the Patreon, uh, the Indians podcast Patreon. So I'm thankful to all the, uh, all of our supporters on there. And, uh, I apologize for what we're about to say because we are about to dunk on a couple of y'all. So let us be welcome to this special Thanksgiving feast. Love this one. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Indie Heads Podcast. I'm your host, Maddie at Movie and Prince on Twitter. On this episode, I am joined by Jackie, Ethan, Max, and Jake. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, we are at the the Thanksgiving table. And we are about to have a, a bountiful feast, maybe potentially. Uh, already, if you guys can hear, you guys can hear sirens yes. and stuff. Uh, <laughs> they they are, are, are that hot. They're dangerous. <laughs> these these takes are so hot. I got the cops coming to my door. Uh, but <laughs> here we are. We're we're here to celebrate Thanksgiving once again. We have retired trick or treat because uh, we we had better ideas for Halloween, like uh, listening to scary car music. I think that was better. But Thanksgiving. Here we are. Uh, we have asked you, the listeners, and uh, people on the Indie Head subreddit to give us your hottest takes. And here we go. We're, we're going to get into it. Uh, I think I fuzzed out. Hopefully everyone knows what I just said. Uh, all, I, all I said is that we're just going to get in some, into some That's takes right. here. So we have sourced these uh, mainly, uh, mainly from two places. Uh, from our Discord server, I opened up a Takesgiving channel. And I let everyone go wild. I have. I'm coming in to and go wild. Uh, they did. Yes, Maddie. Maddie has not read most of these because mm-hmm. uh, Maddie has a job, and uh, <laughs> we 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 uh, the, the Discord server went absolutely ballistic, sharing all their takes. And today, after work, I went through and I combed through, and I got not every single thing that was said because there were some things said in that server that. You have to pay a dollar to see because uh, sometimes the Discord it, it can be like that. But this is this is a good sample of what you're missing out on in case you're one of our loyal listeners that is not yet subscribed to the Patreon because uh, 
this is a really good look into the mind of the discord mindset yes truly uh we uh really have developed some very special brain worms over there in the last year but uh we have sourced them from discord but we also have sourced some takes uh from our namesake subreddit the indie heads subreddit of course i asked for some takes uh max asked for some takes God bless our beautiful minds <laughs> and uh we have uh put together a a, a feast a feast for the ears. So let's just get right into it. So our first take, which, oh, by the way, we should we should explain what our scale is uh, for how we're going to judge these takes. So our scale from last year is grill or chill. And if it's a chill, that means it's a good take. It's one we agree with. It's, you know, it's like, yeah, that that's, we're chilling here. We're chilling. A grill is a take or leave it take. It's like, boring get out of here you know put 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 that back on the grill it needs to be cooked over a little bit more it's not hot enough yet and then of course a will for thrill that is we are actually mad this take has got at me on a personal level i have been will for thrilled so uh that is our our scales for the takes so chill grill and will for thrill so Let's just get right into it with our first take from our very own Rose. Uh, music is bad. Ooh, ooh, baby. Uh, ooh, I, I'm I'm Will for throwing out right now. <laughs> All right, you 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 got me, Rose. I music is bad. Did you forget what podcast you're on where we talk about music all the time? And that's not mentioning the fact that we talked about a lot of really bad music <laughs> over the last year and a year and some change. Uh, you know, I disagree because if you're saying that music is bad, that means you're implying that Blurry by Puddle of Mud is a bad song. And I can't I can't stand for that. This this is a this is a certified will for throw moment right here, folks. It's a little bit of a two for one take because the the following take by me is that all music is good, actually. Uh, there's no such thing as a bad song. <laughs> never nobody's ever written a bad song everything that is a song is um also good so i am you might think jake is kidding you might think jake is kidding but you should have listened to the car commercial number one's episode 100 oh, on, where he liked basically almost every song in that series i, 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 I am somewhere between ago. the the rose and jake mindset between the lands of of uh in, in just enjoy things versus hater land is basically where I find myself straddling between often. And I, I will say that music is good generally, even though there is more bad music than ever before, but there's also more good music than ever before. There's just too my, my take. I didn't submit this, but my take is that there's too much music. All music is good, but there's too much of it. Stop. I, I give me like, just pause for a bit and give me some time to catch up music because there's, there's too much at the moment moment but besides that music is good all right we had a bit of a technical difficulty aka uh zoom doesn't like to tell me when there's updates and it just goes haha i'm just gonna crash on you and that, that's how you know that you have an update uh it's lovely uh great we, recording we, system we have set for a up second for there this. we debated just ending the episode there with just our music is bad music is good okay that's the end of thanksgiving because i thought that would be very very <laughs> funny but no, unfortunately no, we, we, have, have more. we have more takes and the first one is already a, a headache into sir i would say well this this jeff delon take is pretty similar to the one we were just talking about it ties in to the same kind of like yeah, we can hop over to the Reddit first. Yeah, yeah. so we're gonna we're gonna go we're gonna bounce back and forth between uh, the Reddit takes and the Discord takes. Uh, of course, uh, you'll you'll know the difference. Uh, you'll you'll know the difference. <laughs> um, so from uh, user Alec Jim Leahy, uh, in parentheses, a critically reviled band that I enjoyed in my youth. Parentheses actually made great music and deserve a reevaluation. I liked plenty of bad music when I was younger. I still like a lot of it. But that doesn't mean it needs to be reevaluated. It wasn't great back then, and it isn't now. Um, I mean, you got to actually say a band. I I don't know. I mean, like I I mean I can fill in the blanks with my own bands. Like, uh, I mean, a critically revolved band that I enjoyed in my youth. Um, I guess if that first Pank of the Disco record, critics fucking I hated think, that record, but I, I still think, think it's a good record. They said in their comment, like I think they said like early 
2000s pop punk i.e like blink 182 or something like See, that th- th- this is what i i i don't like about this take i'm kind of on the the grill to to, to mad uh, to, to will for thrill side of things because like not not mad i would say grill because i've heard some people this reminded me of an end of scroll episode they did where they basically talked about the limp biscuit uh discourse that was sort of happening over the summer around the Lollapalooza performance and all of that which obviously is a topic near and dear to our hearts but like I think the thing that people misunderstand about our podcast is that they think that the Limp Bizkit thing is a bit for us and it is not but I also do know that there are people that like are into reclaiming this stuff in like a post ironic way where they're like oh this is bad so we're gonna like we're gonna say it's good now because Mm -hmm. it's bad and that is just like there, there is an annoying knee-jerk version of that. Well, I think people misunderstand the Limp Bizkit uh, renaissance because the Limp Bizkit renaissance is just that Limp Bizkit is good. Um, stay tuned for a, a bonus episode of the podcast soon. Winky, winky. Mm. But uh, uh, in, in general, I think that the thing that annoys me about this take is when he says, I still like a lot of it, but that doesn't mean it needs to be reevaluated. That just gets into the mindset of like, oh, I like this music, but I, for whatever arbitrary like rubric I've set forth, it's not technically good. It's like, no, if you like it, it's good. Like, yeah, that's exactly what I was going to say. Music is supposed like to be a lot of it, enjoyed. You think exactly. it's good, like- the whole concept of guilty pleasures, I think, is a false, like, mm-hmm. um, you know dichotomy between like critically acclaimed versus um well liked yeah. it's it's incredibly um I, I i think some bands are worth reevaluating from a critical lens and some aren't it's 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 too blink of a statement to be like exactly i mean there's every, every band i like deserves it and yeah. it gets into what is critical versus personal and it, it's 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 too um broad at the end of the day yeah, to be clear. I, I baited. I baited the subreddit on this question. I didn't say it was from this <laughs> podcast. I just said what, like, what opinion that you see on the subreddit like makes you like be like question mark. And I agreed with like all of the opinions for the most part. So like maybe that says something about me. But um, this one's kind of a grill too. I think the idea that like music, you have to like music has to be good in order to like it is very much like a, I am looking towards other people to define my music taste a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't appreciate that as an enjoyer of like FIFA music. Uh, like that's kind of <laughs> how I got into music. I, I guess I can recognize that a lot of the music on those soundtracks is not objectively like complex, but like the synths just hit my brain in a way that I enjoy. So I'm like, all right, I'll listen to it now. I'm like, wow, this stuff, <laughs> this stuff is saccharine and it's not very like deep, but like, hey, it's hitting. You, you and Jake are like minded in that way. You both have taken the car commercial pill more yeah. than any of us. And I will well, count I, FIFA I, I, music. I, I, I will count, I will count I, FIFA I, I, music as also, car commercial. I also oh, love oh, loved I love the they, FIFA soundtrack, it, Maddie. There, there's that's... some there's some non fits in the team. I'm not saying I'm not there. saying the FIFA music is bad. I'm just saying that with the Venn diagram of FIFA music and car commercial music might as well be a circle. It's very close to it. it you're you're not entirely wrong. Saint Saint Motel was on like my top Spotify artists of all time. I like Saint Motel. They are one of the better car commercial bands. Like like, as a as a one hit wonder, though. I mean, the other songs. No, 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 no. no. I've heard I've heard I've heard a lot of Saint Motel songs because my college radio station would play a ton of Saint Motel. So I Saint Motel has at least like five good songs. All right, we're not we're not getting we're not getting (laughs) into that. We're not getting into (laughs) that. Let's go back to the Discord. Let's go back to the Discord. About to start talking about little talks, so you you know just in time. (laughs) Hey Jake, I got a take for us later. Okay. Okay. Oh boy. We're gonna have to go quickly through these because we have we have a lot more questions to get yeah. through. We, yeah. The, the, we'll we'll go through a couple of Discord takes. And we'll we'll, this we'll one's look easy. at a couple of red ones. Uh, yeah. First one from uh, Dave Grohl, uh, fan club member Alex Grishmanoff. We've done two great episodes on uh, playlists that he has sent us. He says the Van Weezer album of the year. Uh, uh, that's a that's a certified grill right there. You gotta put that. You gotta put that take right back on the grill, buddy. Uh, I, I I hate to be uh, we, we of course just had this whole discussion about you know stuff that's good you know it's like if it's good to you it's good you know you don't have to worry about other people uh, there are exceptions and this is one of them uh, put this take back on the grill uh, let me let me just pull up the uh, let me pull up our chew uh, our chews uh, 
zone real quick. Let me let me just double check how many uh, Weezer Uh-oh. streams that oh, uh, that uh, that Alex has really quick. So Van Weezer is just I, I it, it, it's less annoying as a concept. Three thousand six hundred and ninety one Weezer Scrabbles. That's tough. That's that's getting outed on air. I I'm so happy I'm not on this board. That's all I'll say. I'm so happy. I I I I, I like some of the Weezer songs. To paraphrase Kanye West talking about <laughs> late, late, Lady Gaga, but um, I yeah I I can't even get because like even if you like want to be like I'm gonna make my album of the year this like intentionally silly uh, album by a late in their career band just doing dumb bullshit for fun uh there's a much better version of that it's called still sucks by limp biscuit yeah (laughs) yeah all right well uh let's let's move on to uh aj moser uh only taylor swift could write a 10 minute song uh i think this is literally uh, something that a swifty said so yes this this, this, this is so true this is so true this this is is a a hard chill so yeah this is Chill as fuck. I, I will say, while, while we are on the air, I will say that All Too Well is probably one of the two or three actual best Taylor Swift songs. So Yeah, great. It, it's good. Great song. Oh, God. Okay, this one for me. Ian has said that Ian, a friend of the show, Ian, <laughs> who's done some artwork for us, uh, he's said this take a couple of times, and each time I've been completely <laughs> bewildered. In yeah, saying, my, my brain shuts off and I don't accept it. Like, it doesn't uh, let the thought in. <laughs> Uh, Reputation is a top three Taylor Swift album. Uh, that's like a will for thrill. Like, what the fuck? What the fuck, Ian? I I, I, I I will admit, I have not spent enough time with the album to be able to like list off a whole list of everything that's wrong with it. I've only listened to it, I think, in full once. Uh, the singles on that album are so bad that that simply cannot be the case. And Taylor isn't always good at picking her singles. Like, Me was the fucking single for yeah. Butter. And that album is, like, not bad, but that, that single, like, just... Set makes... the tone horribly. Yeah, no, yeah. It, it scared off, like, so many people that otherwise would have liked that album. So she's not always right about what she picks for singles. However, all of the Reputation singles are dog shit. Look what you made. I mean, we here's here's the only argument you need to know. We just did a podcast about a better interpolation of Right Said Fred. When, <laughs> when you compare Taylor Swift to uh, Future singing "I'm Too Sexy for This Syrup," there's just, there's just no comparison. <laughs> no comparison. It, it, it makes it makes Reputation like ten times more embarrassing than it already was. Mm-hmm. I think Taylor Swift, for a lot of time in our society throughout the 2010s and late 2000s, has been unfairly reviled by our society. Um, like as a woman and all that, you know, like the, the predatory boyfriends and not whatnot is not good. Um, but I think the counterpunch to that has also given her too much credit. Mm-hmm. I, I don't, I, I don't, haven't listened to enough Taylor Swift to like really give a nuanced take. I know I've listened to enough Taylor Swift to know that this take is a will for thrill. Um, <laughs> but I haven't listened to enough Taylor Swift to create like a, a fully developed opinion, but like, she's fine. My take is is that she's a very good songwriter and like a god tier level like girl boss businesswoman. And if you yes. admire that part of her, that's like oh yeah. yikes. And, but if you just like the songs, I understand that and agree for the most part. They're pretty damn good songs. Like Love Story, like a lot of those classic Taylor jams. Oh, still slap. Love Story is like, a yeah. I remember hearing Love Story in a Planet Hollywood. La- Las Vegas when I was 10 years old. I was like, wait a second. This is kind of a banger. God. Well, oh boy. Well, let's, let's, let, let's, let's swing it back to, to Reddit. Um, because our next take on Discord would be that Max is being silenced, which, uh, no, that, uh, no, I, that's just, yeah. I, 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 uh, deny that completely. Uh, Max, do you have anything to say about that take? Um, no, my uh, take no, was Max, included no, at a later no date. you can't get into it. Can't get into it. Max, when are you I, starting the sub stack? uh hmm, good question uh <laughs> you'll find that information on my twitter later yep. <laughs> the, the, the twitter we can't see because you're silenced exactly all right well let's move on back to our reddit uh our reddit takes from uh user jeff Dellen. the amount of stuff that slaps is an amount that can't possibly be true that's um, a well for thrill 
That's yeah. a, that's a wolf kill. Yeah. That's that's cool. Here, kill. Here's the thing: is every slaps, slaps. slaps. We already went Sla- over this. Slaps is being slaps <laughs> is being overused. Sure, are we using it too much? Am I using it too much in the Discord all the time? Absolutely. Here's the thing: slaps, slaps. It's just a great word. It's visceral. Like when you say the word slaps, like you feel it in a way that you don't if you just say oh this is good like like it's it's just not as fun to say it's really fun to say the word slaps and so i'm going to keep saying it i i think you're on to the right track here i was actually talking about this take with uh, my girlfriend when we were driving here i think this take ultimate this is the only one i saw looking at the document beforehand i think it just boils down to them thinking the word slaps is overused yeah which like kind of yeah but like you know sometimes you listen to a song like American Terrorist by RxK Nephew or Beam on Your Toes by RxK Nephew. And you just, you go, yeah, no, that slaps because your brain just short circuits and that's the only word you come up with. So uh, that one's a, a somewhere between a, a grill and a will for thrill for me, folks. Um, but oh boy, this next take, uh, we were, oh, I got to wait for Max to come back because this this one, uh, this one's very important for, for Max to uh, get into. So I guess while we wait, uh, for him to return, we'll go to the Discord real quick. Uh, from Boo Cannon, <laughs> oh, uh, yes. Random Access Memories is the fourth studio album by French electronic duo Daft Punk, released on May 17th, 2013, through Columbia Records. I Will mean, for thrill, not a fuck? chance. I mean, I, 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 don't, I don't know if I, can, if I can abide by this. It's just really spicy. It's just, it's, I mean, you know, it's, it's borderline offensive to bring something like this into our discord i mean like it's it's i might i might have the bamboo cannon from the discord this is just you know we got this is it's a family discord it's a discord for families and that's very uh um, family you know it's not family friendly behavior this, all right this, this it's is not go it's, it's godard of discord takes it's it's just too too much for i mean i don't care if you do this you know but it's just not good behavior okay i don't want my kids to see it it's just it's fucked up, um, but let's we, go back we, to we, we love Buchanan. Buchanan's well, going to be back for more. Well, let's go back to Reddit. Uh, although Max is eating right now, so I do not know if uh, we want them to, to spit We're out good. their meal. Okay, so from uh, user Bridge Money, something being commercial sounding makes it inherently bad. Like Phoenix nineteen oh one is a banger, and I'm the only person in the sub that stands bands like Neon Trees, Walk the Moon, and Fits in the Tantrums. Uh, great Ray idea, by the way, but probably better for pop heads. And of course, let's take us into Max's question being like, what, uh, you know, sort of default subreddit opinion do you disagree with? So I guess it's basically saying that, like, you know, oh. it, something with commercial sounding doesn't, you know, doesn't make it inherently bad. So right. I, I'm, I, this one's kind of a, uh, it's a bit of a idiot. I I will say this is how I feel about this take. This take is a is a perfectly reasonable, objectively true take that keeps going and then it falls off of a fucking cliff. It's, <laughs> it, it, it's that it's that meme. I don't know if you've ever seen this video, people out there in the internet, but they're interviewing this high school football after that player after the game, and he go and he's and he's like he's got this ridiculous smile <laughs> on his face, and he goes. They had us in the first half. I ain't gonna lie, <laughs> and and that's me with with this thing because like I love 1901 by Phoenix, and I agree. Like fun, I literally did a whole rant on this on an episode of this podcast about how something sounding slick that, and like commercial ready doesn't necessarily mean that it's soulless art. Like you can put a slick sheen on pop music and have it be like fulfilling, but there's also this point. This 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 then gets to the second half of the point is when you're standing slick bands like walk the moon and fits in the tantrums get the fuck out of here those here's, bands are evil here's evil. what i'll say how are you gonna sell a car if you're playing a bad song people will feel bad <laughs> and then not want to buy it, buy it. <laughs> like, i can't walk, dispute that i can't dispute you, you, that you just bodied the whole car commercial series in like five words <laughs> you're just like Walk the Moon is like okay. Anna's Son is a good song. Fits in the uh, Tantrums is completely easy. irredeemable. Yeah. I think the bands go get worse as the sentence goes on. Yeah. I don't know if that's a hot take that Neon Trees, that one Neon Tree we, we, song we, is we actually like good. The, uh, we like the one Neon Tree song that was in the podcast. I, I, I like, I like Animal. Animal by Neon Trees is a very solid. It's a, Neon Trees are just even poppier killers. That's all the Neon Trees is. Ooh, that's, that's a good that's, take. That's, there's like a like, 95% chance this person's Mormon. 
<laughs> oh god okay well uh yeah this one it, uh, um Heart, I, I stand music. I, oh, it's I, a grill because i'm halfway between yeah. i stand and... by the first half the general sentiment of the first half you lose me in the second uh fits the tantrums are like evil they are an evil evil band uh uh, enough said uh and then they also had uh i believe another take uh that rock musicians going pop is somehow anything other than gravitating towards the status quo this is not to say it's always bad but it's not a remotely interesting move um it depends I, it, it depends rock going pop is I, I, think, I, I think this th- th- this falls into the same category as the first one where it's just too broad and i think that's a little yeah. bit because of how max is is baiting these people is why it's like this <laughs> yeah. but, good job uh, max good job good job uh, for no, the no, 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 no but <laughs> I, I i like a lot of the takes you 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 got uh, for us like there's some good ones but this one is one that's like when you make statements about rock musicians like that that's just so generalizing and so at a certain level this can't be but i kind of get what they're getting at which is just that like at like it, whatever year we are into poptimism being a thing like when an indie rocker is like you know i'm gonna make like like there was a period of time where where indie rock bands being like you know what we actually listened to carly ray jepson was was like a novel and interesting thing and then that got played out within five seconds because you know what everyone likes carly ray jepson it's good pop music that's what it's the word pop means popular for a reason like but uh yeah i think this is i get what they're going at where it's like when someone like casey musgraves makes the pivot to pop music it's very easy for people to be like "Ooh, this is very interesting that she's doing this and really it's just like i i i didn't think that casey musgraves album was either interesting or good but uh um i i don't know i i think this is a grill it's just too general yeah to agree with fully yeah yeah well, let's, it's a grill. Let's, let's go back to the uh, to the Discord real quick then for a few more takes uh, from Gavin. Trade... The first, the first of multiple multiple appearances from Gavin. Just just yes. you wait, listeners. He he's making your presence felt on this episode. Yes, uh, Trey Anastasio is the most important guitar player of the nineties. Um, I mean, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't give a I, shit. I will say, I, I the one thing I have to offer this, so I'll just say it real quick. Um, I worked a Trey Anastasio sh- solo show uh, at the Wiltern during my brief period of time as an usher there, and I have, I've never really listened to Fish besides To Boot To Boot on that one episode of the podcast, so I... <laughs> to boot. Um, I am not very familiar with the fish category uh, thing, and I'm generally not a jam band person in general, but I was sitting there at the Trey Anastasio concert, and I had a thought, which is you either die a hero or you live long enough to see yourself enjoying a jam band concert. And that's where I was. <laughs> like, it was a fun time. Uh, Trey was going in. And you know what, Gavin? I, 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 I can't hate on your fish love. I, I, I love that it's they're a great band for you because there are so few things that Gavin is actually sincere about. And Trey Anastasio is, and Fish is one of those things. And, you know, I don't agree that he's the most important guitar player of the 90s obviously because i'm a fucking nerd and i'm gonna say johnny greenwood because i'm a dork uh but you know to each their own yeah good good for you gavin uh this one this one's this one's a certified chill i I, I call it a chill yeah because like even though i don't agree with it like i i i believe that he believes it and that lots of people believe I, I would show it that because I like it whenever Gavin enjoys things. <laughs> it's so rare. That doesn't it's happen so rare that much. podcast sometimes. Uh. My girlfriend was talking about, have you seen this video where this guy is just really excited about a train? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. They got sent out of the station. No, no, no. This is a guy way, way before TikTok. It was just this guy who's like really excited. This like antique train is being sent out for like, uh, and he's just like, oh my God. And he's like just talking about like different facts that and or like the model number and stuff. He's just so excited. It's nice when people are excited. So, so basically, you're saying that fish is like an old train. It's just you know you're just glad to see it chugging well, along. No, still. I, I actually no, I, I kind of dis <laughs> dislike jam bands pretty hard, but um, they're they're more like bad trains because I don't like bad trains because they're bad. <laughs> mm-hmm. 
Well, uh, be careful. Uh, don't ever give Gavin your address because he will come after you, brother. He will, I, I wasn't he... planning on it. Uh, but yeah, let's let's get to you, Jackie. You you've got the next take here. Oh uh, yeah, this, this was, is so cap. Th- th- this is just I I have a this is a a, a tongue in cheek way of saying a real take that I have. My take that I included on the subreddit was that contrary to popular opinion, Radiohead uh, have swag and get hoes. This was inspired, no. of course, by uh, Cam uh, Matrix Reloaded's <laughs> classic tweet. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> people on the internet will say anything. Things like Charlie Brown had hoes. No, he didn't. That isn't true. Um, which I love that tweet, but this 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 take is just about how everyone likes to call Radiohead the dork band, and and it's similar to how people like to make fun of Paul Thomas Anderson film nerds, and it's just like the reason why Radiohead have lots of annoying fans is because they're good, and those annoying fans give them a bad reputation that they do not deserve by the way that those annoying fans often talk about Radiohead, myself included. Which I, I really enjoyed the recent episode of Six Songs that explained the '90s because the whole thesis of that was basically Rob Harvilla saying these guys were dumb fucking teens when they made Creep and they were like immature and into like Jerky Boys sketches where they prank call people and how people have like retroactively lo- put all the pretentiousness on them because of where they went and like how ambitious their music got. But like at the very beginning, they were just like, "Yeah, we're writing songs because." girls don't like us and like they're fucking they're dweebs but they're also like they're they're cool guys in a way that you would not get the sense of based on the kind of person that is into radiohead myself included i I will even say that and that's just my take the wording of your take is like technically chill because like they obviously didn't get hose in the beginning (laughs) that that is indisputable but then they started selling out arenas and when, once you start selling out arenas, like inevitably you have swag and get hooks. Like that is, that is the only end game. Thank you. Thank you. Like I'm if you were selling worst. out arenas and you don't have swag and get hoes, you're a, <laughs> you're a loser. Um, but the fans of Radiohead are a different story, but that's not what your take is. So yeah. let's chill. Thank you. Alrighty then. Uh, so, and then one more from the discord before we move back to Reddit. Uh, oh, this from, so good. from Grant, uh, Clipping's latest output is for cowards who are too scared of being into the insane clown posse's masterworks. That's a chill. Uh, That's I a chill. I will I will say I I've not made this super public, mind you, but in my head and, I, and occasionally when it's popping discussions, I have always stated that Clipping are an insanely overrated act uh, who are not very good because uh, there is uh, it, it's. Basically, like people try to act like David Diggs is like better than like Lin Manuel Miranda, you know? Like they act like he's better because like oh he does clipping and stuff. And it's like this dude made a rap for Disney about getting a puppy. Like oh, come that on, that song slaps though. This is the and same, it's, and it's one of the like seven Hanukkah songs we have. So like I guess, uh, I guess, but I, I I think that that the David Diggs is a huge dork. And oh, I yeah. think he's a huge dork, and that's why I don't he's really a- like clipping that much because I think like uh, I, I, it's it's you know we're death grips, death grips. They kind of go okay, like they use this noisiness, they use this abrasiveness, and even like other acts, you know, even even JPEG Mafia, who I am somewhat of a hater for, uh, for at least a time was making good music because uh, death grips and JPEG Mafia, except for some of the more uh, later material, uh, remembered to make the songs good. And clipping outside of like, see the the take police. They're already coming for me. They're uh, they're already they're already coming after yeah, me. Yeah, I was gonna say I, I agree. I agree with you to a point, but I'm slightly more positive than you. I, I like clipping more just, than a few massive. of the clipping songs. They are, they are a little I will, overrated. I will, though. I will say this: Pitchfork has been pretty much exactly right on clipping since the beginning. People have gotten mad at Pitchfork for always kind of like giving clipping bad reviews, but they've always been on the mark of like, hey, like. It's like, here are these two noise musicians who are good at making noises, but are not good at writing songs. And Davi Diggs does not have like that songwriting mastery or that filter to filter out these guys' dumbass ideas to make the songs good. He's just not good. He's just not good enough to do that. Clipping overrated. That's, yeah. Uh, ICP are so cool. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're awesome. 
Uh, I find it interesting. Uh, Babytron, when he was growing up, uh, used to be babysat by one of the members of ICP. And That's so, Babytron, so awesome. The, the great Malenko goes hard. Yeah, shout out to Sean Jordan we're one time. Yeah. yeah. But let's go back to Reddit. Uh, from uh, user Mighty Projet, Bob Dylan only got so much acclaim in the 60s because everyone else was high. <laughs> Uh, so true. This. So true. Uh, those damn hippies. Those, actually, those, uh, those damn wait. boomer hippies. I, I actually know. I take this back. I like this tweet. It makes me laugh. I have to give this a grill because people weren't that high in the sixties. They were smoking fucking dirt weed, dude. If you saw the weed, if you saw the weed, if you saw the weed, the, the, the I mean, West Coast, the LSD, I'm sure, was, was more happens. potent. Yes, but the the weed that that they were smoking in the in the sixties compared to the weed that you can just get from the store anywhere anywhere that has legal weed in the U.S. now is like night and day. And anyone who's been smoking weed long enough will tell you that. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that, that's a bit of a gr- a bit of a grill. Which is well, why you have to wonder about their tolerance in, like, in the sixties. In the inherent vice, like he fucking smokes weed like literally all day long, and part of that is because it's not as strong, and you can just be like chilling, smoking weed, and, and being a detective. Like it was a better time. Mm-hmm. Weed is weed. Sometimes weed is too strong. Now that is the <laughs> thing. Uh, I, I I I don't have any strong Bob Dylan takes. Bob Dylan is good like objectively really great but i've never fully accessed his work in the way that i probably should have yeah maybe 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 i could ask jeremiah to do a a late transmission but that would be like probably an hour long so yeah uh, yeah maybe maybe it's own maybe it's own bonus episode if jeremiah agreed to do that i haven't listened to a lot of bob dylan but as a noted enjoyer of artists and bands with art like people that have bad voices i have to like probably (laughs) chill this yeah well oh boy this next take though this this one's this one's a will for throw for me uh from vapor uh vapor limo channel orange is an okay but wildly overrated album uh, which i absolutely positively disagree with i think channel orange is better than blonde I think Blonde's a good record. Uh, chill the hell out of this one. Sorry, go on. Yeah, this one. This one for me is a is a is a will for thrill. Channel Orange is a great fucking record. Just because just because Blonde is the one that all the indie heads were like, oh shit, to you know, because Alex G was on it and shit. Like f- like Blonde's a good record. It's a great record. I'm not disputing that. But I do. There is something about Channel Orange that I like a lot more. It's definitely uh, a bit easier to grasp. And I think Frank Ocean's uh, writing is, I think, his, his, the fact that he was sort of eyeing not totally for a mainstream audience, but like basically, sort of, you know, at, at this point, this was Frank Ocean when he was still like at that time had only just like gotten out of like writing for pop stars. Mm, so, totally. so like, <laughs> I, 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 this, this one's this one's a will for throw for me. Uh, Chet Orange is a great record. There's so many great songs. Uh, fucking Pink Matter, Thinking About You, I think is still a great song. Uh, monks is great uh fucking crack rock is an incredible song it might be the best frank ocean song pyramids is great ah i can't i can't i can't I, I, Lowe, you're my enemy i i am going to say grill i i love channel orange very very much i will say i think people like you that hold channel orange above Blonde and Endless in any real way are gassing themselves up because they have too many memories attached to Channel Orange. Because I also do. I'm not I'm not throwing stones in a glass house here. Like Channel Orange takes me back to like high school in a way that is so fucking vivid. And I do appreciate that like it is a completely different artist than the artist who makes blonde and endless and like the way he's writing songs is so much more like narrative based like every song on blonde is like a story with characters that he explicitly says like where he was imagining in a world that was rosier than his own or whatever however he describes it like these are fictionalized characters that are representing like emotions that he has where blonde and endless are much more explicitly like autobiographical in a way that is not the typical kind of autobiography like it's very still poetic and like i i I think blonde is there's a two-hour podcast of me talking about blonde (laughs) before i came out that you can go check out but uh yeah i i i I think this take is fine because i totally get why 
people think it's overrated. If you don't connect with Frank's specific thing, then it's just like an R and B album. And I think it's a great R and B album. I think it's an R and B album that's written by one of the most interesting pop songwriters of our time. But like, I, I prefer both. I think endless is way better than channel orange too. Like I am so high on endless in a way that I don't think a lot of people are. And uh, as a result, I, I, I still, I kind of agree with this take just because it's my third favorite channel, but it's also so much better than nostalgia ultra too. Like I like nostalgia ultra, but channel orange is a significant step up. That's kind of my rankings there. Yeah. Nostalgia ultra is, is a record that I would, it doesn't hold up as well as you would hope it would. It's still got yes. some really good songs. And I still think it's Radiohead got some good ideas. cover still goes has some good ideas, but I definitely think it's stuff that's much more refined on, on Channel orange, but uh, nevertheless, Ethan or Jake, do you have anything to say about this album? I think this takes basically a chill blonde. One of my favorite albums of all time, channel orange. I've listened to like maybe eight times. So I guess I agree with it in that way. I'm, I, I think I could possibly get into channel orange more if I actually tried, but uh, yeah, I, I basically agree with it. My hot take is that I haven't listened to either album. Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Jeez. All right. All right. This is, this is right. where I, I make heads angry and I say channel orange is straight up almost bad to me. Oh, <laughs> the no, side nah. A is borderline unlistenable to nah. me. Super rich kids is a horrible song. Nah. Oh, that's just wrong. Super rich kids. I, that's, I that's just a lack of understanding. Kids it's so about the California much. mindset. It's awful. It's about, <laughs> it's a, it's a song. I, about. I've tried channel orange three times and like, until pyramids uh, every single time i'm like people are lying to me people can't really like this album that much there's no way society has told me frank oh, you're not gaslighting the you, best artist in <laughs> of our generation and then pyramids comes i'm like oh wait it's like pretty good and then like the rest of the album come like okay never mind but side a of channel orange is like i I will agree that thinking about you is like slightly overrated and thinking about you is incredibly overrated go on uh, that being the song that broke him i think is and that and 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 fertilizer whatever but once it gets sweet life is like a straight up perfect song uh and i think sierra leone is a really really good song i like super rich kids and then but you're right like the 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 really like transcendent part of channel orange is the back half with crack rock pyramids lost monks bad religion bad religion is still so good shout out to the cat power cover of it um but uh pink matter's great obviously forrest gump's great and then the end yeah so like i i i i still like channel orange but i will agree it is not as like unimpeachable as blonde is for me or even endless yeah all righty well let's let's go back to the discord real quick got a couple couple takes here uh max uh i actually will i, I will go up to your right yeah. you, this, this one's a twofer for you because there was one you posted on our discord and then a follow-up on uh the subreddit so I'll let you go ahead and, and, and say your two takes. I'll, I'll... <laughs> ah, um, no one would care about the strokes. If 9-11 didn't happen. <laughs> and, then, been... and then your, and then your follow-up after that. Um, oh Julian Constablanco's father secretly funded the Saudis that performed the terrorist attacks of uh, September 11th to fuel angst within the city and streamline the band's acceleration towards stardom. I, I think is that, is that count as a take? <laughs> I, I, th- I, I, I think like uh, like RX nephews, American terrorists. We don't really even need to unpack this question. This this question has unlocked so much about the universe. We can just kind of leave it there and move on. You know. Like, See, yeah. I was I was I read this question earlier before we got to it, and I've sort of just been sitting here racking my brain trying to figure out what it means. <laughs> um, I I sort of get like I I mean. I know they took off that song because of 9-11, New York City Cops or whatever, but I I would like, I would, I'm would i curious to hear your explanation for this. I, I guess the only thing I can ex- maybe explain for Max, because I think Max just posted it as a bit because he doesn't understand, <laughs> he doesn't understand why the strokes are popular. I do think that some, the way that culture recentered around New York, indie rock culture recentered around New York after 9-11 happened, like, I don't know. People that are in New York, like like even before nine eleven, I think had like kind of what we call now main character syndrome of like everything is about New York and New York art is like the most important thing. And then I think there was like a doubling down on that attitude after nine eleven that kind of coincided with all of the like we are we are New York strong, we are the best, 
like all the sort of Giuliani stuff. I don't know. I, I think they, they probably would have been popular just because the thing about the strokes is that even though I have never been a huge strokes person, like the fact that they're like watered down late period albums still managed to make every single our indie heads user soy face, <laughs> uh, w- whether you agree with it or not says something about their appeal, which is that like for a certain kind of person, this is the ideal rock music, like really. And I am not that kind of person, but it's not just like that they're gaslighting you or they're buying into some dumb hype. Like people really do fucking love julian casablanca's doing that voice over those three chords you know like they go ape shit for it i i was on a date recently and i said i didn't like the strokes and she said what the fuck are you talking about how can you not like the strokes i i, I even will say I like i couldn't saying they're overrated myself. and not liking them are two different things like i like the strokes but like i even think that is this it is like a, like, I, a, like a light, I, light seven album. I believe mm. in turn on the bright light supremacy. Yes, Maddie. Thank That's you. What I Thank you for in. saying it. That's what I believe in. We but... needed more plays in New York. <laughs> <laughs> f- f- fuck, fuck, pitchfork for rescoring. <laughs> like a seven, on the... Yeah, no, fucked up. P- pitchfork, pitchfork, re- rescoring. Turn on the bright lights was my nine eleven. I'll go ahead and say <laughs> that on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh god all right let's let's move on uh we've got a i believe uh we're, we're just gonna go through a gauntlet of takes from front of the show david aka snide laughter oh my uh, god yeah this is this, this, we, have, we, we 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 put a challenge to our, our our lovely patrons and david when you give david a challenge david will go in with takes got one of our finest optimists out there david yes let's let's get into these takes so we're gonna try to rapid fire through these uh so kids see ghost is the midest album of all time uh for me that's a certified chill i totally agree that record is overrated as fuck uh, anyone who think I, I, I am, you, I am you, okay. you are you are full. If you think that record is I, is I, like I, above I will, a seven I, out of ten, I, you're fooling I am going yourself. To, I am going to come one hundred percent clean here. Uh, I listened to the Kid Sea Ghost for the first time while I was in Hawaii, so my opinion of that album is completely irrational, and I think it's good. I th- I, I'm pretty sure the reason why my brain thinks it's good is because I listened to it on vacation, and now I'm just like, yeah, I like. I also think it's it's. It's not a great Kanye album, but I think it is probably the 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 best post Pablo. I think still, I, I, I that's not a that, that's not a high like that, I'm not saying it's a masterpiece. Like I'm not like Fantano giving it a ten or whatever. Like I I don't think it's perfect, but I I still think it's so much better than Yay or uh, Jesus is King or Donda or it's short. It's short. It's nice that it's short. <laughs> it's one of the albums should be like twenty five minutes long. I will say I that. I like this album because there's not a lot of it. Mm. I've always thought I've always thing. thought the Kid Cudi was ass, and uh, I, uh, I, but I've always I've always said that usually the exception is that Kid Cudi is usually always great on Kanye songs, uh, but. Uh, and, and he, 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 he gets have, re, reborn is good there's good they, they I, don't have, I, I, they I don't have the chemistry or the magic it's just not there anymore it's just kanye is too tainted and cuddy is I, also i will totally say my, my, my one big take about this song is that uh, the song free ghost town part two is fucking hilarious and one of my favorite rap uh rap rock songs of all time and and the 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 way that they distorted the voice he goes guess what baby i'm free i think it's the funniest thing in the whole world i love it mm-hmm. anyways we can move on we need to move on he has so many okay. takes all right the next one a beginner's mind elicited the biggest man out of me out of a release i was hyped for in years uh, um i've actually ooh. been listening to that album a decent amount and i sort of get i get the take i do think that there's some good songs on it that i like but also it's just sufjan stevens playing soft acoustic songs so it's like i don't know nothing really groundbreaking for him but he's really good at doing that one thing so i think he does it a couple times good on that album too Mm. My only take on this album is that I saw that he made a song about Buffalo Bill that has the word autogenophilia in it. And I said, nope, I'm <laughs> stepping out stepping out of this Sufian album cycle. See mm. you next time, folks. That's I all I have you, to say. I think if you're expecting too much out of a Sufian album cycle in 2021, you're setting yourself up to be disappointed. And I am a huge Sufian fan. I love Sufian, but like... 
I said this I in the think... Discord today, uh, the, the other day. Uh, the Sufjan album started getting mid when he stopped taking five years to make them. That's the thing. Well, I don't think Carrie and Lowell was that great either. That's not something that's mm-hmm. like a take or like that's not something for the podcast. I don't think it was that great either. I think his last fantastic album was The Age of Odds and All Delighted People came out in the same year. And I think that that's probably better than anything that's come out post 2010. Um but I was like, I was gonna say the newest uh, the, the the one before Beginner's Mind uh, was uh, the Ascension. I, there, were, there, these, there were parts of the Ascension that I really liked, but then I realized that the fact that I couldn't remember that it was called the Ascension is pretty damning. Uh, unfortunately, sorry, Suf. Yeah, I used Adavan as part of my uh, work password for Adivan, onboarding Adivan today. Adavan is the best song on the album and is one of the best Sufjan song in years because it's a it's Sufjan doing a Tom York solo song is what that song is and that's why it's good. I okay. like Beginner's Mind better than The Ascension, I think, but I I don't feel strongly enough about either one for that to really be yeah. that strong of a take. So. I I agree. Mm-hmm. I think it's, I think it's a fine of album. Albums that need to be sh- um, should be short. The Ascension is. Oh. Mm-hmm. Sorry, you, yeah. I think you you lagged a bit for me there, but yeah, uh, agreed. We need to keep going. Let's keep, let's keep going. Let's keep yeah, going. sorry. Let's wrap. We keep going. Uh, the best Metallica song is "Nothing Really Matters," and if that song is them selling out, then call me a capitalist. Um, I I don't have any. I don't know. I don't listen. I don't have Metallica. any Metallica opinions. I, I don't even need to get into this one. The, the the pop Metallica songs are good, and the people that like only like the underground older Metallica stuff are kind of lame, but also yeah. nothing really matters is not the best Metallica song. Moving it's on. it's scary to go to sleep sometimes. I mean, shit. Uh, Donda and Certified Lover Boy are both 5 out of 10 albums, and so is the Imagine Dragons album that dropped this year. If Donna Deluxe didn't drop uh, Life of the Party, Way Too Sexy would be the best song between the three albums. I had not listened to any of these albums. Uh, you could not pay me to listen to any of these albums. Well, actually, you could. I, I would like a job where I could listen to these albums. Honestly, uh, <laughs> but though pe- people, sh- Kanye should be paying people to listen to Donda because yes. even though there are parts of that album that are interesting, maybe even good, that is the biggest fucking chore I have ever I have ever tried to. I, the biggest pill I have ever tried to swallow, and the reason why is because the worst, every worst part of that album are the moments when Kanye West is rapping, and that didn't used to be an issue with Kanye West he wasn't the best rapper but it wasn't like I was actively dreading him to appear on songs and that's how I have gotten with new Kanye West material oh, I, I, my big take on this is that Certified Lover Boy and I, I cannot believe I'm fucking saying this is a, <laughs> is, is a better album than Donda that's all I'm going to say I can't even get into that debate because mm-hmm. it makes my, my own brain hurt but uh, I think that Drake uh, is self-aware. It, uh, Drake is not self-aware, Drake is self-aware. But, but, but Kanye West makes Drake look like the most self-aware person on planet Earth. Like, <laughs> like, like that's how bad it is. Mm. Okay. Oh, God, this next one. Heat Waves is just... one of the better Glass Animal songs. Ah, even evil. If rest that's the a will for the evil. That's evil. evil. Heat Waves is one of the too. worst, worst singles I heard from no, 2020. No to... Uh, patron cal 50 or david but that's get the fuck out of here oh boy uh marvel movies are completely average saying they're bad outside of their impact on the movie industry minimizes the actors generally solid performances and saying they're great completely ignores that these films almost always hit the same narrative beats every single time and that formula has worn its welcome um, I, 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 think, I think they thrill. are bad. Yeah, it's but, Wilford Thrill because this is such a boring take. Like I agree it with it, but it's not even a hot take. It's just like the most cold take. It is like, very centrist. I, Marvel movies are absolutely fine, and that's the, the problem part. with them is that like you watch it and your brain turns off for two hours, and you're like, "That was fine," and then you don't think about it again. And lots of people like enjoy that about the them and but then why is this a hot take i don't understand i, I mean I it's a hot it take either. it's a hot take if you hang out with like only people who only marvel the radio or whatever which, which, <laughs> but, which is, that, that is da- david david loves the radio he, he is the uh, david <laughs> is the most optimist pilled of anyone in the discord easily that's i true. would say so that's true. Well, let's I, I live in brooklyn i can't talk <laughs> uh art having queer themes almost always makes a piece of art better, and I say this with complete sincerity, gay themes tend to elicit feelings of empathy that is lost in a lot of hetero works. Eh. I, it's probably chill. Probably chill. I, it's probably chill. I, 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 I got, again, I, I, uh, I don't, I, I'm not, I'm not gay. I don't, uh, 
I, I'm not. I'm not gay. Uh, if you're gay and if you're gay, <laughs> that's, that's like okay. Like, that's gonna sound good. Not, 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 not Make gay. sure you say it twice for everyone. <laughs> no, ho- really no, no, homo bud, no homo this, butt. No homo butt. This is also really gay. funny because uh, I've been playing so much Halo this week. <laughs> <laughs> Matt, Maddie and our other co-worker Luke, we have a boss who is gay and our boss accuses Maddie of being gay and Luke of being gay all the time <laughs> and, and it's, it's funny because... Can you talk to HR both, about that? That's sounds but, 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 No, but, but both, both, both Luke and, and Maddie are the gayest straight people of all time we've been over this before, but that's a different conversation. Yeah, uh, but let's, let's continue. Uh, there are good male pop country notice how I said pop country and not just country, X and they tend to get ignored due to classism commonly associated with the country sucks mentality. This um, is chill. One. This is name chill. One. I just, you, uh, got, you, got, you got an answer. Walker Hayes. You, I, I, I feel like you could have said, uh, fuck, what's, who's the race? Who, well, I, I, I say who's Morgan the Wallen. Morgan Wallen. Because I know Todd in the Shadows, take, take a shot for uh, Todd in the Shadows mentioned, uh, was, was on the Morgan Wallen train before uh, the video came out. But I think there's just some stuff that's like not necessarily categorized as quote unquote pop country or radio country that is just like very popular country music that like is good. I I, I I'm am talking de- about I, like Gavin McGraw. So what is his name? Tim McGraw. Well, this this is this is this is a Gordian knot because the thing is is that people who don't like country are always going to associate it with the names that are not good and people that do like like I have learned that like I actually really like a lot of country music even though it's just not the kind of country music you generally hear on the radio but that doesn't mean that like all country on the radio is bad I'm just not willing to sift through like I'm not enough of a country head that I'm willing to like listen on the radio and sift through what, to get to the good ones. What David what should do, saying? what David should do is subscribe to our Dave Grohl fan club tier for eight dollars a month and put together a playlist of the best male pop country Honestly, acts. And we can judge country, from. not 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 Starkel Simpson pop. Yeah. Yes. I, 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 I like I like Kelly Clarkson and I like Taylor Swift's pop country stuff, like her her earlier stuff. Like I I, I the Brandy Brandy Carlisle is not really pop country, but she's like a more she's got an incredible voice. Those are yeah, like, what I, I he didn't say. Did he say male? Yeah, male, male, male. Oh, pop he did say yeah. male pop country. Ah, uh, well, I mean. Yeah, I, I haven't necessarily gotten into like all that, but you you are right that it's like people who the thing is is that people who like Sturgill Simpson will say okay, well that doesn't count as like pop country just because it's but it is like but I, I don't mean know. when you say pop country, I immediately think of a serving kind of sound that is yeah. like that I, is I, all I think the maybe songs Dave, sound Dave, the same. I think maybe David's just trying to say that like pop country isn't that sound that you're associating, even though uh, it's so whatever, much of it it's is. whatever Nashville's it trying is, to push the a, pop. It is a more to homogenous. The, to the radio it, it's, it's still the most homogenous genre by far because it is the only one that's still dominated by radio. Like, mm-hmm. um, but but I don't know. I, it, it's a grill. I, I whatever. Let's move on. I think country is unfairly dismissed. Yes, I that's think. true. I think people will say like, oh, I, I mean, the obvious, I listen to everything but rap and country. And I think that that stereotype has been kind of diminished within the last few years. But I still think that people don't give country music in general uh, a fair shot or a fair shake and completely dismiss the genre when there are very good things out there, um, both contemporary and from the past. And it's just like, oh, this is like an acoustic guitar and some with a vaguely Southern accent. This like song isn't good. But again, I'm thinking maybe maybe there's a different definition of pop country. But I ha- there's a it's not an acoustic guy or guy with an acoustic guitar. It's the most overproduced. Like it's not even it's not even country music. It's not you know um, Waylon Jennings. It's not uh, Merrill Haggard. It's just the most like most glossy music. And maybe there's something I'm missing mm-hmm. that's. Maybe this is more of a 2000s, 2010s thing, and there's been more recent development. I, I think what you're I, describing I mean, is, I would call bro country more than pop country. Yeah. It's like w- Willie Maybe. Nelson was making pop country music in the 70s or whatever, but it was just at a time when it wasn't overproduced and you could actually enjoy it. And now what is the most popular country music is this slop, this like... I mean, no offense to the members of the podcast who are of the uh, Toby Keith mindset. And, and <laughs> I, I, I actually, 
I, I like uh, oh, I love God. this bar. I love this bar is a good song. Unfortunately, like I, I like some of the Toby Keith songs, even though he is like an objectively bad person, and it's not an ironic thing. It's like he has good pop songwriting skills that he uses for evil <laughs> purposes, just as such as to threaten to put a, a boot up the ass of people who attack America. But... My favorite outlaw cowboy uh, musician is RXK nephew. Uh, exactly. That's that's how I, I feel. Love that we 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 can we put have, this we have, to bed because we could we could yeah. do this but, all day. Yeah, we have three more. Oh God, which I, I we need to move on to more takes. But I, I hate some. So this, one, this, this, this is tough to get this through. Next, this next one's a real like it's going to be tough to 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 get. Actually, we should just dismiss it very quickly. Uh, Jesus is a solid seven out of ten, and Blood on the Leaves is the worst song on it. And that being said, the Life of Pablo is better than Jesus. Wrong. Wrong Yeezus, all the way through. Jesus is best record. Blood on the Leaves. Is that sample distasteful? Probably yes. Does it still slap? It does slap. Uh, and the worst song on that album is definitely not Blood Leaves. It's probably... Um, it's it, it's uh, what's it called? I Am A God. I Am A God. Oh, no, I love I Am A God. I, yeah, that's a good song. Too. I Am God's great. All right. It's <laughs> We've fine. reached our Kanye quota for Wait, the album. I Am great. I mean, Seth Rogen video. About to. That bound to is I, yeah, bound don't, to. Don't, you say, don't you say send it up. Don't you say send it, it up. I was thinking about it, but no, it's probably Bound to. Bound to is probably the worst one. Although Bound to... I've 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 swung back and forth on Bound Two because I saw like I thought Bound Two was good boat. and then I think it's bad and then sometimes I go oh it's actually good and I'm kind of in that place where I did it at, at a at karaoke a couple weeks ago and it was a lot of fun so I'm back to <laughs> <thinking> it's good. <laughs> um, I wish I was. Uh, but Life of Pablo would be better than Jesus. I mean, uh-huh, I, that, guess, that, I, I guess I guess terrible thing. I guess I, like I get it. I, 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 I like get Life it. of Pablo. I get it, but like no, Pablo's just it's too it's Jesus is so refined and so focused in on what it is and Pablo is off in all these different directions the life of and the fact that it's like a, a base level good album is a complete miracle because there's it, there's not a lot yeah. of it's like it's the biggest testament to his artistic talent of all time even though it's not his best album because the fact that that album he pulled that album out of his ass is like one of the great miracles in history and it's ruined his career because it's made him think that i can make a classic album at the last minute like it's a homework assignment i'm submitting at 11 59 p.m because he did it once and so he's convinced himself he can just do this every time now and it's bad for his art long term but life of pablo is a small miracle but i still think jesus is way better yeah uh, and then last one from David, I think. I'm not, unless there's more. I, than we, we can sk- I, I don't, I don't even, even know what that first word yeah. means. Yeah, I don't. Sorry, sorry, <laughs> David. Should. It's too David many, had too many questions. Too many big words. Let's move on. Let's move back to the Discord then. Uh, thank Where you, David. You eight to... letters, please. Yes, Ooh. the Discord's back in our minds. There, there we go. There we go. We got, <laughs> we, got, we, got, we got some. We got some food takes. We got some some Thanksgiving takes I'm from go Cal, off from, on this. Cal fifty turkey is a low tier meat. Agreed. True. Turkey is terrible. It sucks. Agreed. It's have dry, no. and it only tastes good if you put salt on it, which I guess would be like certain like, happen no, during no, no, Thanksgiving. You are um, having shitty turkey. You got to have better turkey. I okay. like good turkey. Like I've had good turkey, and it's yeah. you know you can prepare it in a way that it is good. But if you make a list of all the meats prepared well, turkey prepared well is inferior to all the other meats prepared. That well. That actually might be fair, but I, I, in terms I of also, sandwiches, and this wait, is my take in the wait, Discord. Turkey sandwiches are fucking delicious. They are Wait, great. He's right. That is, that is true. And but, they are arguably, in terms of like class, or like, we're not talking about salamis or like um, any Italian fancy, fancy, fancy shit. Deli meats. Yeah, just um, like classic deli meats. Yeah, Gabu. turkey is probably the best out of all. I, I, I think that's very reasonable. That. But I think mm-hmm. as far as roasted, like for your time Thanksgiving, like our family has fully pivoted to chicken on Thanksgiving. And it's Whoa. great be- because A, like turkey is good, but it's harder to pull off correctly yes, is the hard. thing. And so the, the thing that doing chicken for Thanksgiving allows you to do is that if you, if you know how to roast the chicken and that's something you do on a regular basis, it's easy and you just throw it in the oven and it's way less work and it's way less hassle getting a chicken. And then you can focus all your time on making like 70 side dishes because that's what you I guess the chicken my, with anything. My, uh, I guess I'm not sure if someone says in Discord then um, mac and cheese, is it a good Thanksgiving uh, dish? I, I say yes. Yeah. I, 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 
I have never, I usually don't have it at Thanksgiving, but I also have it just like as a regular meal exactly. other times. And also it's, it, it's totally, re- I understand why it's considered a Thanksgiving food for so it's, many people. It's more of a mis- Midwestern thing, right? It, it, yeah, even, I'm it, from the Midwest, it, it even then my, my family rarely had mac and cheese for, for Thanksgiving. So I don't know. They usually have it, like, it, it, it's, it's, just a, it's, it's a household by household thing. But like, mm-hmm. if you, if you make it a tradition in your house, like it's a perfect Thanksgiving food. It goes with the vibe. Yeah. Uh, and then AJ, turkey is only beaten by ham for worse meat. Um, All I have to say about this is that Ponyo would be ashamed of you, AJ. <laughs> Pon- Ponyo loves ham. I, oh, so you can go, Maddie. I, I said I didn't like ham in our, our Discord conversation, but like like a good ham is kind of bussing. I, yeah, so- I used to be team ham over turkey, and now I probably prefer turkey for my sandwiches, but ham is good. I like ham. Ham, ham, has, a, ham has a higher pork? cap. Yes, but it has a exactly lower floor. floor. That's exactly what I was going to say. A pork word chop for word. can be delicious. Pork ribs, delicious. Oh, yeah. And, but also, like, even I'm talking about, like, even I like deli ham. I like grocery store ham. I think ham is good. But I also love, like, a honey baked ham. Like, I, I prefer yeah. a honey baked oh, yeah. ham to oh, turkey. Yeah. Not, not, to be, not to be a Reddit guy. Not that. to be a Reddit guy, but I definitely prefer bacon over, over ham. <laughs> but I don't know. I've, been, um, I've just I, had I have, I've had really gross ham before, and I don't think I've yeah, had really gross turkey point. before. Um, yes, that's fair. But yeah, but you, I do you, think you it can't has a have higher gross peak. gross deli ham. Like gross deli ham is gross. I'm not I'm <laughs> not going to deny that. But so is gross turkey. Like when the meat's a little wet. Yeah. Don't don't <laughs> okay. say that, Max. Don't say that. Uh, don't say that. Uh, you say anyways, that uh, I'm not saying this next take from Cal because I mean I don't. It's we don't need to talk about that. Get into that. that yeah, National right. are a great band. Okay, I disagree. Uh, yeah, that, that, that's only that's only a hot take in the Indie Heads Discord. That's the thing is in, in the Indie Heads subreddit, like that would just be that would have five thousand of votes. But some of us are thirty two, married and live in the Midwest. Yeah, yeah. I'm not one of some those of people. Some of us are in Brooklyn and twenty four, but you know, hey, uh, it fits both. Uh, <laughs> it is completely safe to deep fry turkey. Uh, <laughs> This is not a take that is endorsed officially by the Indians podcast. <laughs> Merk loves I mean, that's right. what you said. I, I think there, there, there was one I cut out, I think, that Gavin had that said, like, it's okay to put tinfoil in the microwave or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. and, and, and a follow up to that from Barely March it is okay to give listeners of a podcast step by step process for putting <laughs> Ope Pipe Bomb. <laughs> so, this is a good transition into our next segment. How to build a pipe bomb. How- <laughs> and then uh, one, one more for the Discord before we go back to Reddit. Uh, from AJ, there is nothing wrong with my hose. Uh, that's a Wilford <laughs> thrill. thrill. That's a Wilford you, Thrill. Your, you ho- your hose be, is so you tiny, bro. in the Discord to understand this, but in case you in case you somehow listen to the podcast and don't follow any of us on Twitter and maybe didn't hear about this or whatever, uh, AJ has the world's tiniest hose. AJ has a hose <laughs> that, <laughs> that only goes about one foot out from the spigot it's attached to. <laughs> and and there was an entire day on the discord where for i would say probably five straight hours we made fun of his hose and it was, I, 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 I laughed so hard i cried uh you should join the discord it's a dollar a month we have a lot of fun on there yeah uh boy let's go back to reddit from from a uh, old friend of the show and my fellow moderator at the indie head subreddit lucia chris if radiohead was actually still active I bet they have some kind of interest in NFT stuff. They are still active. They made yeah. a goddamn video game this uh, year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. Also, there's yeah. a one. I guess no he means cap. like new music active, not like archival release active. But even I, then, I, I am I am not even, convinced even Radiohead then, is done. A lot of people think that Radiohead's never going to release a mainline studio album again, and I think those people are wrong. Yeah, no, and they're, they're, they will. I, no, I, I'm with you, Jackie. Like they're just again, they're it's progressively more time is going to be taken off, you know. And, also, they, and and they're taking even more side projects. Like they're doing the smile now, and Johnny's doing more scores than ever. Like they've all gone off way on their bullshit. And we may even get another like Tom solo album before we get another Radiohead album, but it'll come whenever the time is right, quote unquote. Yeah, I I get the take. But I feel like if they were going to do it, they would have already done it. Tom, Tom, for all of the we've talked a lot about like the NFT craze and how it's taken over some of our, our finest musicians, especially electronic musicians are tragically. Uh, uh, Tom isn't that kind of lib. Like, I think like, Tom, like, he Tom, knows Tom, too much Tom about the environment. Very, 
He's too Gen X lib, and he, also too knows too knows too much about the environment for that. He's got a whole rainbows. album about how computers are scary, so <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you would okay, like it. That's NFTs. perfect. The distribution of in rainbows is kind of the opposite of an NFT, right? Yeah, like no. Doing peer to peer sharing. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't like public domain. Like you, you didn't go like as far as like public domain. Like I guess like I think like King di- Giz did during their five album run. Uh, but even then, it's like yeah, no. I I I understand the take. I know where it's coming from, but like, uh, it's it's a bit of it's a bit of a, a grill for me. It's a bit of a grill for me, but I get it. I I, I understand. I have no evidence to support it, but Lisha Chris, you're right. <laughs> are we going to do one more Reddit one? Because I love this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. One. We're, we're, we're gonna go through oh. a couple. We're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna go through Lane Leotic. He has given us uh, three takes. We're just gonna go through all of them real quick. Uh, Stained is a misunderstood slowcore band. We have been chill. saying this. That's one hundred percent. The We've thing about St- Stained is that the the lead singer of Stained is a MAGA guy, and that sucks, and we hate that. But it's been a while is better than any Duster song. It's like like the the fucking uh, <laughs> like pr- production on that song, like the guitar work on that song is legitimately like some of the best like melancholic pop guitar songwriting I've ever heard. And then him doing the "It's been a while" thing is very fun. Duster's just pitching praise out here. I like staying, but it's been a while. I, I I I love Duster. I'm just I, I I just made that joke because I wanted to make slowcore fans mad. I love I love slowcore very much. Uh, I, I like dust. I like Duster all the Duster albums, but yeah, I I think Stained is. Uh, I I think in general, I think we've t- discussed this a lot, but like as someone who was a music nerd who turned my nose down at butt rock there are a lot of incredible fucking guitar tones on these butt rock songs like the guitar on blurry is legitimately like some of my favorite production i've heard on a pop rock song like it just sounds really fucking good and so even though a lot of these guys are making very dumb songs about how they hate their girlfriends or whatever like the music can still slap off yeah uh but yeah misunderstood totally agree it's chill uh ethan this one you i don't who i don't know who brainiac is but you know who they are but i'll just say the take uh brainiac signing the interscope and tim taylor not dying would have completely upended the butt rock timeline uh what the fuck is wayne talking about uh you gotta so if you could watch transmissions after zero the debate um brainiac documentary i helped crowdfund um, to find out but no brainiac are a foundational indie band from the 90s they were i think they were signed to touch and go in chicago, from chicago um big probably one of the biggest influences on the dismemberment plan and every other band that came around in the late 90s 2000s um they were kind of electro punk going more electronic as they went starting um but out of the summation yeah i literally think um tim taylor the singer tragically died um, in a car crash right when they were getting bigger um but honestly i think if they have they were close to blowing up and they would have never blown up like they wouldn't have been the next nirvana or whatever they were trying to you know um do the record labels were trying to do with every post nirvana band but they would have been popular and they would have changed the sound for sure because they they were considered one of the best live bands of all time and if you, I, I could imagine people seeing them live and really ch- like being influenced and bands being formed around it, kind of like a Sex Pistols um, or Velvet Underground kind of thing. Um, I definitely think Tim Taylor um, not dying would have been incredibly, um, I mean, obviously it was a tragedy and incredibly sad, and that's why it shouldn't have happened, but it would have dramatically changed underground music and through that probably somewhat popular music and popular rock um and i mean one of the guys from brainiac went to um, on to form enon which had a couple hits actually but they were more there wasn't as they weren't as unique um as brainiac and i I adore enon especially um whatever that one album is um um i can't remember um but yeah, I, I I think this is the chillest take in that Brainiac are arguably like out of, you know, there's always these music docs and that's why Brainiac has a music doc where it's like, oh, if this band had just broke, they were about to break and then something happened. But like Brainiac are that band. They are the most of that band. It is crazy. And, and 
what they've made was is so fucking good. Kissing Prit Prigs and Static Couture is like one of my top five albums of all time. And if you haven't listened to it, it'll blow your mind. Hmm. Well, there we go. We got something sincere. We took it out. Yeah, so we, we got there. We got there. I just love Brainiac too much to like make any jokes about it. Like, one of my, you know, I love that this, this, uh, this mm. Redditor has sandwiched a, a, a very good sincere opinion between two very good uh, <laughs> like jokier opinions. And then I like this last one. Let's read this. Uh, within two years, we're going to see a wave of people wearing denim jackets with patches for shoegaze bands. This is all Death Heaven's fault. Uh uh, my take is a uh, and what about and it? And what about uh, it? And what about it? Wayne? Yeah, I, 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 I think the metal fans that get pissy about shoegaze in general uh, are annoying to me because I love shoegaze, but also it's just like I, I am the person that is there whenever a metal band is ready to make their pivot to shoegaze because I like when the 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 the, the heavy sounds are also pretty, but. I, I get why they get annoyed that like so many when 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 you're, if you're a title fight fan and they make hyper view and you don't like shoegaze like I get why you're kind of grumbly grumbly or if you're a deaf heaven fan who doesn't like the new album like I get why people are grumbly grumbly but just let let the slow the 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 shoe the slow dive fans put patches on their jacket who fucking cares the world's ending yeah uh, well, yeah because like isn't patch aren't patches just like posturing to like. Uh, I mean, some people like, I don't know, like, the, the, I, I think the culture of it can be cool, but it also can be very uh, p- posture poser. The only thing I know about patch culture is there was a guy in my biology lecture, uh, my sophomore year of high school, who wore like a punk jacket. If only we had Grant like on this episode. <laughs> Grant, Grant would be able to give us the, the, the 411 on, on patch culture, but we've got to move on, unfortunately. Yeah. So let's go back to the Discord for a couple more takes. Uh, from Barely March, uh, Taylor Swift, Heike fell off, Fat Mike is a better songwriter. <laughs> sure. Whatever. I mean, this is just true. Uh, get well soon, Fat Mike, uh, aka. Uh, 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 James Murphy, aka uh, Steve <laughs> Bannon. God, uh, Linoleum's a cool song. Gavin's right on that one. Oh, uh, God. Well, speaking of Grant, uh, Taylor's version is the Snyder Cut for people who were into Super Who Lock in 2013. Chill. Uh, this this is a total chill. Uh, uh, in one sentence, has completely uh, just, just, uh, just killed all the Swifties. Uh, in, I had to one... look up what that meant. But after I did, oh, I'm so I jealous of you. <laughs> God, I wish I. I mean, I just watched too many Sarah Zed videos at this point. I guess. Mm. But uh, and then this one is a celebrity take from JPEG Mafia. Uh, oh th- yeah. Thank you, Alex, for posting this. I am the Drake of experimental rap. Uh, sure, buddy. I, whatever you say. I I, I audibly lol this. Even though, like, the thing is, is that I get what he's saying because there actually is like a direct influence of Drake on JPEG Mafia's music and the way he tries to be popular with his sort of clipping style rap music. But here's the thing, JPEG Mafia, don't say that. Don't 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 you say that. Don't know. <laughs> No, you again. Let don't again. Be uh, just, just attempt to be humble. You know, just, just try. Uh, but from Cal Fifty, uh, computers should randomly explode. Uh, so true. So true. Yeah. So true. Agreed. Uh, from <laughs> from Max, you want to read this take? This is your own. Yeah, sure. Uh, emo music as a genre wouldn't exist if we had nationalized healthcare. Every take Max has posted has made me ponder for like fifteen minutes. <laughs> <laughs> i i think i get where max is coming from basically saying like if these guys got therapy there would not be emo music and i don't think like i think there's just some guys that just are like not a gonna... breakup a breakup should not affect you so much to write an entire album about <laughs> it so so the guys who started emo you know embrace right to spring in these dc bands we're going back um they were all generally like pretty well off, like suburban kids who could have gotten therapy and probably had decent enough parents who would have supported them. Like I, that's my take. It, it has not. Um, they 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 were too well like they were too well off to not for nationalized healthcare to really affect their lives. Mm-hmm. I Maybe it wouldn't have evolved. I I yeah I I get it, but like no, I just think look, there are some dudes out there. Either they're just not going to take the therapy or they just go, nah, this is how I want to express myself. Um, I mean, 
England is full of a bunch of freaks. I mean, Morrissey came out of there and listened to songs he made. Well, it's cloudy for like 300 days a year over there. That's true. It's like, that's true. How that's is your scary. life not going to be dog shit? <laughs> that's true. Uh, from barely. <laughs> Yeah, I was barely laughing. March, oh my god, this one. From barely March, pancakes should be hollow in the center like donuts, <laughs> so sickos can't eat that part first. <laughs> Max, you're wait. Have, has Max said? I don't think. I think. I don't think you've said the way that you you eat pancakes on a podcast. Yeah, no, for sure. I eat the middle part first. What do you want to do about it? I'll um, <laughs> let me pull up the email I sent to Noah Chomsky. Noam Chomsky <laughs> about this um, for a little. Uh, background um pancakes are hot when you get them yeah no i sent he he sent a response he said he'd try it sometime but i've never followed <laughs> god him. damn it you're wa- this is a dying man you're yeah. wasting his time let me get back into this um so basically pancakes are hot when you get them this is obvious also um restaurants especially like to uh distribute their toppings from the middle and work their way outwards. So the highest concentration of sweet and good things is going to be in the middle of the pancake. And so naturally you want to eat the the best part. I mean, I guess one way of thinking is that you want to save the best part for last. And that, that is typically true. But if you're not eating the middle of the pancake when it's hot, it is not going to be as good as eating the middle of the pancake when it is at its most hot and most delicious, therefore at the start. So what you do is you just cut a hole in the middle of the pancake, eat that bite first. You get the tastiest bite out of the way because it would not be tastier if you ate it last and then eat the pancake as the normal human would. It's to me, it's, <laughs> it's just too much work for me, Max. I'm sorry. You're cutting a hole. It's like six <laughs> fork stabs. <laughs> I, 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 nothing confuses me more than the pancake take. I can't even, my, my brain can't even begin to engage with it. Like, I need to I, wrong. I, as someone who is a picky <laughs> eater, I understand the logic, but like, okay, I don't, here's the thing. The, what, just here's what you should do. I, I, I just, just eat the pancake like a pizza or something. Just like cut it up. I don't, okay. I don't think the middle tastes that much different than the outside. Mm-hmm. I, and I, I, he's talking, I guess he's talking about like the way the heat and the way that like, the the toppings and stuff were spread, but yeah, even then, like you just gotta so, put syrup on. So that. one justification is when I was nine years old, I thought this is what I thought. I don't know if it's actually real because I watched a Man vs. Food episode when I was older. <laughs> it never happened, but I thought what happened was on the Portland episode of Man vs. Food featuring Adam Richman, obviously the show where he ate very big and very hot things on the Food Network. He went to Portland and there was a cafe where they had very big pancakes, and all the people in Portland would eat the pancake with a bite from the middle first so i thought that was just what people from this, portland did this, this is just me, pacific northwest brain in action and like you you, you and freaks me being there. from portland was like oh yeah i mean i'm gonna eat the pancake from the middle so you, know, you just doubled needed. down on this, this bit that apparently wasn't even real and you've just committed to it over the years yeah and so for the last 14 years i've always eaten my pancakes from the middle has, and no you, one's ever called me on it. Okay, that's the thing that I was going to ask you next. Like, has anyone called you out on it? Like, just like you're at a diner or something with somebody and some and someone notices the way you pancake. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? No one's done that? Yeah, I don't listen to the opinions of sheep, though. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that goes to your next thing, which is that people hate my pancake idea because they're afraid to sexually experiment. That's true. <laughs> uh, you, you are a damn freak, Max. I like, I like how you sounded like Barack Obama when you said that. That's true. Uh, uh, gotta have them ribs. And pussy too. <laughs> that pussy too. And pussy too. Uh, from from Jenna, uh, post punk is and Barack Obama was probably oh, this gonna is a great, this is that's a chill opinion. Jesus Christ! All right, from 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 Jenna, post punk is simultaneously the best genre of music in a completely incoherent slash undefinable genre label. This one yes. is a certified chill for me. I love, I do love like some of my favorite music is post punk. But oh my post-punk, fucking god! The phrase it's... "post-punk" doesn't mean anything, and we should stop yeah. using it and figure out a better way to to talk about bands that sound like they they should be classified as post-punk. I like this take because this is basically like what I was going to submit myself had Jenna not submitted it. Because I saw Squid last night, and they were fucking amazing. But the point is not that Squid were good. The point is that when I saw Squid, I'm like, Squid are in a post-punk band. They're not ri- like. 
they're they're an indie rock band. That's just what they are. They just utilize element. They're influenced by other bands that you could call post punk. And it's like it just doesn't. All genre names are made up, but especially this one because it's the original meaning of the term post punk and how it was used has been run into the ground so many times by it existing. It, the internet makes words lose their meaning. Like, like that's what the internet does is you put a word into the internet and it starts, it starts like trauma doesn't mean what it means anymore because of the internet and whatever. Like when you just use a word over and over again on the internet, it warps meaning. And I think that's what's happened with the genre identifier of post punk because a lot of these bands are the most interesting creative bands out there but when you listen to what is strictly defined as like the quote-unquote post-punk sound it's often very boring it's often very like straightforward and unmemorable and like so i can't say that i'm just like a post-punk fan because like there's what kind of post-punk do you want to talk about like that's and this is the nerdiest possible question we could be answering and max wanted to veto post-punk discussion in this episode but i think it's unfairly maligned is my take because a lot of it is fun a lot of it is not self-serious aren't like the talking heads post yes like 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 squid my squid are just like b-52s plus talking heads plus radiohead which are like you can't say that not like don't put the the b-52s sound like both black midi and squid like they invented gremlin voice with 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 the b-52s all right a lot of that a lot of those kind of pop post-punk like like elements are what is the core foundational text that like black midi and shame and squid are 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 based off of i would say so yes they are direct influences Mm -hmm. um my take is that we should stop saying post-punk and say post-hardcore because we're listening to bands like brainiac or just say like like i mean art rock is like one of my other least favorite uh genre identifiers because like it implies that other kind of rock isn't art or whatever or that like only only noodly whatever is art rock or i don't know but like that's just like what it is it's just like rock music that is kind of creative and different and draws on some elements of punk music like there wasn't any moshing in squid last night until like the last couple of songs like it's not really like hardcore music in any way i don't know it, it, it's a Gordian knot because the word just doesn't mean anything anymore. So like trying to place boundaries around the outside of what isn't, isn't post-punk is useless, which is why we've come up with Gremlin because Gremlin is a better genre identifier actually. Mm-hmm. Which I guess, Jackie, we were both fans of intelligent dance music. Which is the worst genre name. name yeah. But like, but like a lot of the things that are tagged as IDM are good, but it's not their fault that like, it's not Aphex twins fault that it's not cause it's intelligent. It's not Aphex twins fault that people nerds on the internet listen to his music and say, you have to have a certain level of intelligence to understand this, that like that's, he didn't do that. That's other people put it. The same with Radiohead. It's like, listening to radiohead doesn't make you smart and there are lots of people on the internet who think listening to radiohead makes you smart like no radiohead are just good How, we we should call it instead of you know intelligent dance music we should just do i like it dance music and just put i like it all as one word uh, that's the, the the it's not it's ra- it's uh it's rave comments uk which is similar to disco comments but I believe the exact quote is all dance music is intelligent dance music because it's intelligent to want to dance and have a good time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's that's no cap. Oh boy. Well, let, let, let's let's uh, let's finish up our Reddit takes real quick. We got a, we got about three. We got a couple more. Uh, so from Ryan the Q, I have a Thanksgiving take. <laughs> the newest tradition of listening to Alice's Restaurant is fun for maybe the first time you're introduced to it. After that, it's a, it's just a bunch of people waiting for it to be over. I mean, it's going to be on the background. You're not really paying attention. Like, eh. I don't what know. What is this tradition? I've never heard I, of this. I think my family started doing it recently. There's a song called Alice's Restaurant. It's like a super long song. Uh, some 18 minutes, apparently. I just looked I, it up. I know the song. Yeah, it's it's like, become... Because it's like... You listen to it during Thanksgiving? Yeah, it's just, it's something that's on the, you know, the... Uh, it's on the Thanksgiving playlist now, because it's like about Thanksgiving. Oh. So... I, oh, I get Yeah. Um, I, well, I don't know the song that I, well. I have no idea what this is, but I'll just say that um, the 
the, this this song this is nothing compared to the real uh, long song as a sensation to listen to and it holds up every single time, which is of course American Terrorist by RX. <laughs> American <laughs> Terrorist is the should be the new Thanksgiving tradition where we all get together and listen to all nine minutes before we. Oh yeah, I'm gonna make my family listen to Audubon this this Thanksgiving. <laughs> Uh, my dad loves that song and because he just liked hearing german guys going fun 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 on the autobahn he, he would tell me he would tell me like this crazy song about germans having fun on the road and not knowing that it meant drive until like five years ago mm. damn uh from from 493 that's a familiar name uh it's okay to swallow gum it's healthy actually it makes you smarter and handsomer. We can save this because um, he, he brings this up again. On I mean, or we can say it yeah. now. This, 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 I we had to talk about this on the episode because this was one of the most uh, discussed topics in Discord history recently. Which is, is it okay to swallow gum? And there's one strong contingent that is like, it is one thousand percent okay to swallow gum, and oh. you should, and not only can you, but you should. And then there's the rest of the group, which was like, I guess, but I just don't do it. Which is me. I've never swallowed gum before. Not um, on purpose. I, every I know, the every thing time. With Gavin, the thing with Gavin's sake. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, Jake. It's it's not the swallow gum thing. There's a there's he doesn't. I don't know if he said this in the Discord. Oh, it is it's in not, the Discord. It's it's not the fact that he sw- like swallows his gum. That's one thing. Like whatever. Like psychologically, I can't do that. Like my brain just is not programmed to swallow gum. It's the fact that he chews gum for like one or two minutes, and when it loses its flavor, he swallows the gum. What the fuck? Will what for real is- that? Yeah, what it's fucking ins- what is like the, it why be would surprising. you what is the point of gum? Just have mints then. Just have mints. That's what mints are for. Mints mints just slowly melt in your mouth. Like just have a mint. Why would you do that with gum? It's with everything I know about Gavin, it shouldn't surprise me at all. But like when he said that like as soon as it loses its flavor, he just eats it. It broke a part of my <laughs> it soul. Did break, it broke me. I was like it, it kind of ruined my I was like, what the what I I, I don't – thank God Gavin's not here to defend himself because what the fuck, dude? What the I fuck? don't think anyone should be allowed to be born in Oklahoma. <laughs> <laughs> he's not even he's, – that wasn't even born. He's a Texas boy, but he's, he's – he's, Oklahoma's his new home. Well, that's a bigger state. We can't we can't work around that. Maybe, I'm maybe, pretty sure maybe. every time you swallow a piece of gum, it adds seven years to your life. I think I read that somewhere. <laughs> wow, uh, he's well, making some points. Gavin's going to live think, forever then. Gavin, Gavin is going to outlive all of us. That's I can, true. I oh. can guarantee you that. Uh, 2100 is going to be a great year for Gavin. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, our last take from Reddit from Scott making sense. Uh, this isn't really a hot take, but some sometime thing or something I've been bothered late by lately in music slash entertainment regarding corporate partnerships between brands and artists. Example, McDonald's and Saweetie. I understand why the brands do it. I understand why the artists do it. But why TF do the fans care? Is this just another example of people trying to make their entire personality? I like blank insert pop cultural reference or am i too old for this shit lethal weapon 5 coming soon what oh. so this, this is, is the, the most gen x I, I thing i've seen this oh, is yeah the, the i don't have a question i i have a comment of a q and a <laughs> uh, this it is, is. I, I i i think this person is is correct uh, but this person just like is is willfully like delightfully ignorant enough to not understand that like people's brains are just poisoned People's brains are, are, are rotting from the inside out because of the oh. combination of fan culture and capitalism. So, like, yes, of course it's silly that people are, like, excited about the Saweetie meal. But also, like, global warming, we're, we're not stopping it. Like, whatever. Let people have their Saweetie meals. Or I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I don't get worked up about the stupid brand partnerships because it's, like, you, it's the, the tire the creator machine, like, meme. Like, you can just walk away. Like, close your eyes. Don't look at the screen, you know? Mm-hmm. So I do find it weird that Megan Lee Stallion has a Popeye's hot sauce that I just only know because I live near a Popeye's. I mean, now now all all the chains are trying to get on. And actually, that one like that one does kind of make sense as far as like the way Popeye's markets himself and all that. But like, oh, for but, sure, like, it looks good. Um, I I. <laughs> The 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 that just this just reminds me of uh the the one brand partnership we can all agree is awful is fucking Travis Scott partnering with BetterHelp like that's oh, that, that is, <laughs> well, if you're gonna get mad at a brand partnership if you're gonna get mad at a brand partnership pick that pick like the people putting the fucking uh uh pride flags on on their Raytheon uh rockets and stuff like <laughs> like don't yeah. waste your energy at the Saweetie meal you know what I mean the fat 
the fast food meals are fine. Like I could, I could make fun of people getting the sweetie meal, but if there, if there was a big thief meal, yeah. <laughs> if they had the big thief meal at McDonald's, I'm ordering the fuck out of that. I love the Lank Nuggets. The Lank Nuggets, yeah. Okay. Well, <laughs> the uh, sauce. The, the, the half the, meal the, the is a meat sauce. It's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's just. It's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it's a giant, oh my, God, a giant. my happy meal came with a big hat. <laughs> okay, we, we're, we're coming up on two hours, so we need to rapid fire through yeah, uh, these last. Let's go. There's so we'll many take, Discord questions. I know, there's so many. We're, so we're going to try to rapid fire through these as much as, as quickly as possible. From Gavin, Fred Durst, and West Borland are the closest we have to ever having another Lennon and McCartney. True. So true, King. So true, King. <laughs> so true. true. Ethan, just hold your tongue. Hold your tongue. Sorry, you're not butt rock pilled. Sorry, you're not butt rock pilled. Uh, Look, I'm the only one who's met Fred Durst here. So, oh wow. yeah, that's right. Shit. <laughs> well, he was actually perfectly nice. Fred, <laughs> Fred is just like a cool, normal guy. He, he really likes jazz. That's. That, I'm surprised he put out another Limp Bizkit album. He was like fully into jazz when I met him. I mean, the dad vibes took over his brain. All right. I mean, you know, I, I would love your dad if, if with the, the swag next on the board. album was uh, jazz. That would make me really happy. If he, oh, if he, it, he it was like West, a tribe album. Or yeah, if he and Wes made like an experimental well, jazz. Has the chops to Wes, pull Wes, up. Wes wants to make an Apex Twin album. We all know that like that's what he wants to do. I mean, that that's the the fucking snacky poo skit. We can't get into it, but yeah. Nevertheless, nevertheless, uh, from Grant, Eric Alper should be allowed to appoint Supreme Court judges. I'm in agreement. Uh, he's definitely better yeah, than anyone yeah, in Congress. If, if, if uh, we granted Eric Alpha the privilege, he would make Ringo a Supreme Court justice, and you know what? That would be great. I mean, Ringo's all about democratize peace and love. the process. What he is your favorite Supreme Court case? Yeah. <laughs> Where he would he would ask who should be the Supreme Court justices, and we would all get to <laughs> Mine's Massachusetts versus EPA. Speaking of yeah, speaking of another uh, open ended question. <laughs> Uh, from Barely March, I think all the hosts on Thanksgiving should argue which religion is the best. Uh, I don't have a take. Uh, this is uh, licorice, it's, it's, licorice Peach. Does anyone else think that Jihad is underrated? <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is, this is, uh, I can't wait for the new pitchfork <laughs> over under. This, this, is, uh, this is licorice pizza spoilers. So if you don't want to be spoiled on the movie. Uh, don't say it, man. Just don't, I, won't, just don't yeah, I, won't, I won't say it. I won't say it. Don't uh, but say licorice it. Pizza, I will say licorice pizza is excellent. There's a very uh, there's a scene early on that is, is excellent that kind of relates to this question. Uh, but from Gavin, uh, it's okay to swallow gum and eat the muffin wrapper. Um, muffin wrapper yes for chill. sure mm -mm. I, I i have never done this but also i did talk in the discord about how uh, i when i would eat lollipops i would always like chew on the stick so i can't i can't knock the paper eaters Just solidarity yeah it's like if you know they they have to understand that people are going to accidentally eat them so they like go okay like we'll make this it's like they, you're not supposed they make to make edible on purpose. Exactly. Like it's like you can eat this and like you can eat paper and you'll feel you'll you know you'll feel fine. I mean, it's just like the you know the Tim Robinson character. I I eat paper it all the time. It makes you stronger. I, I did it when I was like as long eight. as there's, as long as there's like no a... mud pie on the paper, you're you're good to go. <laughs> exactly. It's really an act of like waste rest. reduction. We, should, we have another kind uh, of like eco consciousness. Here. We should read the, oh. the, the, the the next muffin take from Alex. Oh God. Uh, sorry. Wait. Where is it at? Is next it? Take. Oh. At, Okay, yeah. Uh, actual take I have. The muffin top is not inherently the best part of the muffin. It can be, but if it is a truly great muffin, the softer lower half should be just as enjoyable in its own ways. Correct. You should enjoy the crisp, the crisp of the top and enjoy the nuance of the flavor with the bottom. What, what a, a wonderful good take. take from Alex. It's like a wonderful take, but like it just makes me mad for some reason. I don't know why. I don't think it's even wrong. It's just like it's just your, come on. I, we were just, it seems like a narc take. You just feel you just feel pain at someone enjoying something genuinely. Yeah. <laughs> a little bit. Uh, just for, enjoy the top like the rest of us. Uh, from Gavin, actual take. Kiss are a good band and the outfits are still cool. Getting mad at the merch thing is fine, but you got to recognize that Nirvana is one branded coffin away from being at their level in that okay, regard. The, the Kiss outfits are not cool. I, They're not cool. I, 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 I don't agree with Gavin, but I get what he's saying is that like it's very easy to out of context be like, oh, wow, so cheesy. But like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's fun. I, I I think Gavin Gavin's brain his 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 his, his mindset is, is too powerful for us to imitate ourselves. But uh, I understand. Kiss, kiss, 
you should kiss my ass if you think they're a good band. Get out of here with this take. I would say I, I much prefer like Guns N' Roses if you're going to do like pop rock. You know what I mean? Let pop mm-hmm. and metal. Right. But let's get back to food. Let's get back to food. Paradise City rules. Let's get back, back to food. To food uh, Alex, stuffing is straight up one of my favorite foods. Great. Stuffing's good. I really, I, uh, we started doing stuffing with a sausage in it recently. That is fucking ooh, ooh, really good. Okay. I bet. All righty. Definitely shout uh, that out. Uh, from Maddie G, not me. I'm Maddie M. Uh, I am once again begging you to try peanut butter mayo sandwiches, a food staple of the Great Depression that should ne- have never been forgotten. I mean, Maddie's I, from Canada. Uh, like <laughs> apparently, this originated in the U.S. We need to strengthen our like border security because <laughs> this. <laughs> I'm not gonna do I it. I had a whole a whole response to this, which is basically that like a lot of the things that we think of mayo as being gross on like. Mayo is just oil and eggs, so in theory, it should be like a food that you can put on all sorts of things and have it not be gross. But it's just for me, per- purely a hang up with the color and texture. I just Same. don't. Yeah. I just don't like to see. I, I don't like the idea of mayo and peanut butter being together, even though I, I'm sure it might not even taste bad. It's like I don't want to know. I might even do it. Tomorrow. I had a grilled cheese I, I once that had subject, mayo on it, and I was so disgusted. I don't want to subject myself to that oh. deviancy. You know what I mean? Like I don't want to find the grilled cheese find, with mayo is good. Grilled no. cheese with mayo is good. Yeah. Well, no. you could you have a sandwich with mayo, cheese, and a meat. Yeah. Is that different than a it's grilled like cheese? You with put mayo? meat on a grilled cheese and yeah, you mayo grilled, is like a sandwich. Grilled, grilled bread. cheese, yeah. yeah, with grilled cheese and mayo, you just butter it on the outside instead of the instead, I, instead of the butter. Just got and it's so good. Well, it's blasting blast in your ass in the mm-hmm. QRT. All right, mayo is kind of like I'm taking part. over okay, the gotta, podcast. We got a rapid. We, I said we got a rapid fire, so we're gonna rapid fire through these. Uh, from Jake, all food related items should be edible. Cups. Plates, silverware, wrappers, etc. I, I agree. About this. this is this is it's, great. It's because of, uh, it's the, because of the Willy Wonka in the Chocolate Factory movie, um, <laughs> the Gene Wilder version, where he dr- eats the cup. I think ever since I saw that when I was a kid, and I was like, yeah, that's the world I want. I want to be living in. Mm. Uh, Agreed. Uh, from Gavin, take. I just had sex by the Lonely Island would be better if it was called. I just had eggs and was about breakfast. Uh, I mean, yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I, my roommate, outcome. my senior year at college, ate five eggs for <laughs> egg whites for breakfast like every day. And sometimes I'd like cohabitat the uh, the kitchen with him while he was like making his eggs and I was cooking my French press up. That reminds me. Nah. That reminds me <laughs> no, 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 no. A Twitter user uh, Iced Out Omnitrix would tweet about how he, like, during his, his, kind of broke his periods he would just eat like nine eggs a day you eat eggs for oh, like yeah, every yeah. meal and people would be like what the fuck is wrong with you because it's like you can do it it's not it's not bad <laughs> for you um, I, I don't know yeah i, I, is, I, I like eggs game. but i also think when you eat them in more than like a, a small portion it becomes like a lot yeah i guess my my related take is that part of growing up is realizing that uh, a lot of those lonely island songs don't really hold up super well I just have uh, sex is, is still hilarious, though. This, 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 this is as someone who has, once again, who is, who is a self-admitted SNL fan. Uh, some of those Lonely Island stuff just doesn't hold up super well. There's still some really good stuff. Uh, there's the the intro, I think, to Incredibad, where it's like them going... We're, we're back like, is, is so we're back. We're back is like incredible, because it's them just like being like, just going over like a Rick Ross beat, just talking about how terrible their dicks are. It's yes. it's incredible stuff. We're back is great. There's there's there's, there's lots of still really I think good the Bachelor's experience is <laughs> underrated. There are about like 10 to 15 great Lonely Island songs, but you're right, the, the drop-off is a little harder than you remember. It's like when you have Nail to pump these out every week, you know, you're not, they're not always going to be winners, you know? The Boo is the funniest thing the Lonely Island ever did. It's like their original Channel 101 series. Look it up, the I, I I've always really been so into funny. the original uh just two guys uh ones. Those oh, those ones are so too. fucking good. If you like started a sincere indie rock band about male impotency, like you could probably get a lot of traction on indie guys. <laughs> well <laughs> that's just Arab that's Arab strap. Well, just go listen to that. <laughs> well, speaking of male in- impotency or whatever, uh from Ivan, Blink182 are <laughs> indie. Um, yeah, well I think Tom DeLonge's dick be working though. <laughs> <laughs> that, that that is the true. Tom Dolling is doing slinging uh, pipe. I mean, if you try to post, well, with, if you try to post, Blink on Indian. I don't know what's that guy's name. Mark Hoppus. Mark Hoppus got Mark Hoppus. Mark, yeah. Mark Hoppus is like my dick is so small. He's the original guy. He was like, yeah, my dick is small. Like whatever. But you know, he's he's cut, cut my joke like, about cancer. Like there are a lot of like. 
I think he's like the antithesis of pornography. He, M- Mark Hoppus, uh, you know, you need to know that like for men, he, like the, the low balling mindset of you just constantly have to make ironic jokes about how your dick is small. So then when they see your dick, yeah. you're a little bit, they go like, ah, oh, it's, it's fine. My, my dick's a little like come quick. What are you going to do about it? <laughs> like, <laughs> okay, let's let's let's, let's, we'll let's two, hour two of the podcast, and you can tell we're coming. Yeah, we're we're about to. Yeah, we're we're getting really we're close to the hours. end. Okay, we're gonna try to. Oh god, this one. Oh, this is tough. This, this we, next this one, one is is my, is my biggest bowl for thrill. Of, of this one, this one is is specifically designed to make me mad, and it worked. Okay, uh, from barely March, every indie or gremlin band this podcast tries to hype up ranges from either mid to downright bad, and the only good music you've ever showcased was on the number one series the greatest group of mindset band is the b-52s um uh uh, i I, if you have a barely march uh vinyl lp or a cd or some digital copies even uh, i want you to throw that shit in the trash (laughs) smash Uh, it we do not support barely march on the indians podcast anymore uh we he has been on this podcast a number of times he's done a lot of stuff for us but i cannot abide by this and we are officially uh, deplatforming slash disassociating. I mean, we, we are on the podcast right now with Barely Merch's lawyer. Max, do you have any comment? I, I don't think any <laughs> any post-punk or gremlin band has made a song as good or as catchy or as fun to play at a wedding or a karaoke bar as Love Shack. Um, I don't think any, <laughs> any post-punk band has made a song as fun as Give Me Back My Man. Uh, that's all I have to say. Okay. Uh, yeah, just I th- that that's a will for thrill. For I think me. it's just misunderstood. You're just missing out because if you like the B 52s I promise you would like some of the Gremlin stuff. But we're moving on. We're moving uh, on. From, from from Gavin, no indie band is gonna make a song better than Blurry. Um, honestly, re- honestly, like you said earlier, res- respect Blurry is so fucking good. It's really not like I, I I tried to make myself like the rest of that Puddle Mud album, and it did not take fully. There's, but there's there's some decent there's some decent cuts there, on there, there but I, nothing's as good as Blurry. Exactly, Blurry control, is monumental. Control is hilarious. Control, control is great. Control is she hilarious. hate me is bad, but kind of funny. There's like one or two other pretty solid cuts on there, but yeah, Blurry is a, a totemic song. Uh, but speaking of Puddle of Mud, Spear of the Beehive or whoever <laughs> are cool, but they'll never do an MTV Cribs from Iraq. Uh, from that Kong. is true. That is the biggest weakness I mean, of, gonna... of, of, of indie music right now is that like Spirit of the Beehive are just like, I don't know, we make like really interesting music and we're just like guys from Philadelphia and they will never be as in- – like like that is why we've pivoted to the number ones is because they should have better guys than indie guys. Like like indie guys are either just sexual predators or boring. Aware. You know what I mean? Like it's – it's one or the other. They're either a monster. Like a lot of or indie boring. guys have read like Kafka or other philosophers, whatever bullshit. Like I would, I would say in the place of Kafka to sound smart. If like, if, if, more if guys Westmud that... has read a full book, I would be surprised. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but let's let's keep it moving. Let's keep it moving. From barely March once again. I think more bands should piss on fans' faces during the shows. Uh, we we we've discussed on this in the Discord, but that brass against thing did not come out until like after we wrapped up gotta get that and if it did like if that video had come out while we were recording that podcast <laughs> it uh, gotta get that us. would have been a much different podcast than what it ended up being uh, uh, my, my big take about this is that sophia uresis uh, should never have apologized you did no. nothing wrong queen he consented the guy consented <laughs> the guy was like the guy had the best get, day of his yeah. life and we're gonna have to fucking pretend like he had a miserable time up there <laughs> <laughs> he had fun he wanted to get pissed on and she did it like hey you know, what yeah, do you the do? dog had a piss the, the, and he got pissed on by like a famous music. The, the okay. funniest, the okay. funniest thing anyone said about this was what Gavin pointed out when she made her apology, which was how funny it was that uh, the lead singer of a brass Rage Against the Machine cover band said, I always try to put the music first, but this time I, I let shock antic get the bits like you're in a cover band. Like, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, oh, shout out to Sophia uh, Eurystice. Oh boy! Uh, I feel like I would have been fact, so fact, impressed if, okay, if the, field trip the, the, the point has been made fifteen off. times. The fact that her name is that close to urine is just too good. <laughs> <laughs> it's really it couldn't be any better. The whole thing is perfect. Yeah. Um. From 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 David, uh, he snuck in one more take. Uh, <laughs> cigarettes after sex got to be the midest band I've ever listened to because holy shit, there is nothing I could latch onto with their self-titled. Like I wouldn't rate it as low as the tones and I am from this yeah. year, 
by the same level of enjoyability from it. Yeah, they're a boring band. Uh, they're probably sex creeps. Let's move on. Uh, from it Jenna. makes me sad that David. The the the, 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 the girl is the only sex only creep band allowed. Hey hey no absolutely not. But uh, cigarettes after sex uh, <laughs> is like the most boring live show I've ever had the chance to see because I went to go. I I worked the, actually not the most boring, but like. It was it was just a painful to sit through that and be like, this is music that the the style of music I otherwise like done in the least interesting way possible, and it was painful for that reason, even though it isn't like objectively bad in any way. Fuck fuck that band. Uh, but nevertheless, uh, from Jenna, Drake shot JFK. He was up on Degrassi Knoll. <laughs> this, this this made me laugh. That was a great way to say that. Can't can't disagree with that. Um, from Eraserhead Baby, I think raking Radiohead albums is still fun. I don't know. I yeah, this, I it, I don't do it super often, but like it, I, I, you know, I still like it. But I'm the worst fun. person to ask. Yeah, maybe maybe <laughs> maybe we gotta do a Radiohead bonus episode at some point. You know, try oh, to get 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 Gavin. I mean, we we've talked about this before, but like if we wanted to reverse the tables on Gavin, it would be the 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 the, the way to do it would be how long can he stay before tapping out of listening to me sincerely <laughs> talk about Radiohead? I, I think he. I think like that. If I was assigning a saw trap for Gavin, I, <laughs> I, I, I would just share all my sincere opinions about Radiohead, and that would be enough to push him over the edge mm-hmm. um <laughs> hey max you want to i i can't all right if i say this on bike i might get in trouble so i'll let you take <laughs> the right. roll here all right so, so can, we the all take, can we all have yeah, a well, actually, actually we'll save this for um, the end we'll, we'll, we'll say actually max but, I'll, we'll save your take for the end the uh, from, last one. can from, i can i share my other take that i wrote down before ahead. this yeah go ahead it's actually kind of uh, okay so indie pop acts especially from the early 2010s that are frowned upon so like your group loves your passion pits uh two-door cinema club your foster the people yes. are the same quality if not better than their indie rock counterparts from the same time period and the only reason that the indie rock of that era is cherished so heavily is because of it appeals to the demographic of the popular music critics and the average enjoyer of indie music uh they hate themselves and they want to see mature and indie pop uh of that era is generally not that and you cannot tell me with a straight face that like Grizzly Bear Shields is a better album than like Two Door Cinema Classics, Two Door Cinema Club's Classics, or Gossamer. You cannot tell me those are better. I I disagree completely. I think they're going for I putting I, Passion Pit there. Is like, I think they're going for two different things. That's the thing. Different place. Yeah, like Grizzly Bear. I I, I get why people think Grizzly Bear is an overhyped band. I don't love Grizzly Bear, but I think what Grizzly Bear is going for is like much closer to the Fleet Foxes world than it is to what Passion Pit and Tudor Cinema. I I, I you don't have to stand Tudor Cinema Club for me. I am the noted, <laughs> the noted Philippe Zidar stan of the podcast who who will stick up for that that bullshit but uh i i also don't think lumping grizzly bear grizzly bear had some songs two weeks still goes people it still goes that's all i'm gonna say have you listened to two weeks recently i'm just actually curious. yes two weeks is a good okay, song two weeks is a good song it's a fine song what are you gonna do uh from it's so slow. from uh midwest maxwell uh uh fetch the bolt cutters isn't a 10 <laughs> It's a nine or so, but not a ten to me. I mean, I just hate that the fucking yeah, the that. fucking pitchfork review sets these expectations for people. It's just like, yes, who cares? Yes, who it, cares? It, it's not a t- it's not going to be a ten for everyone because music pitchfork is not made gave for I all people. Best music this year. Who gives a shit what they think anymore? Yeah, but, but it, to, it also to be it fair. also is a ten, and we should we should respect Fiona. And as I said in the Discord, uh, trans women be uh, pressuring straight white men into rating fetch the bolt cutter as a ten. That's what we do. It's our it's our agenda I, and. I need to support it still. So, sorry, Max, to delay your take, but I guess that gets into my hot take, which is no, go for which it. I, I I have had this. So th- this is not a surprise. If you were uh, the ultimate 2019 rate on indie heads, and I did not do the the 2020 rate, but really, uh, I guess these critical consensus uh, album of the year stuff, just so many of them have been made. Like Wise Blood. Uh, so from the ultimate 2018 rate, that the top four uh, that were selected were Wise Blood. FKA Twigs, Angel Olsen, and Big Thief. Uh, Wise Blood, Titanic Rising, great record. The only good one of the bunch. FKA Twigs, Magdalene, a complete disappointment. Uh, anything that was interesting about FKA Twigs from uh, her debut album to uh, Melissa and the early don't EPs has been stripped away. Don't think about it. It's been stripped away. 
Uh, all mirrors is not a good record. No, no, it is, doesn't matter. Mm. Yeah, it, it's it, I. I'm not. I. I, I, I listen to I, it. And I, I like it better than than LP one. I don't think it's her best work yet. I think it's good in its own way. And I OPS just wasn't song is so good. I wasn't. I wasn't compelled, and I don't really know how much of that's going to change. You know, that's like, fair. I get it. And then Angel also, saw mirrors. All mirrors. It's it is a bloated mess. Uh, it is a complete miscalculation on what makes Angel Olsen work as a mm. songwriter. Uh, it is her attempting to take risk in that, her this songwriting. Is this is correct. Instrumentation that uh, do not pay off because, uh, again, my woman is about as far as she could go in terms of of whatever direction she was hanging on mirrors, like stuff like intern. That's about as far as she should go into it. Like, and even then, but I feel like even all mirrors, it's not just. I mean, because there is the the counterpart, you know, the acoustic, the acoustic demos or whatever. And I didn't think those were good either. I think all mirrors is just fundamentally the songs are not good on that record. Uh, I did not like the record at all. I think Angel Olsen uh, low key fell off. I, I hope the next one. I hope the next I, one is I, good. I, I, I think I, Angel's gonna make good records. Maddie's kind of. Maddie's kind of. Here, 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 points here, right here. No, Angel, that that Angel Olsen record is not that good. However, and Lily has made this point, and we need to make this point very clearly. The next Angel Olsen album is the first one where she is publicly gay on it, as opposed to My Woman, where it's incredibly obvious that that album is gay, but. It wasn't official Again, yet. I've not given up on Angel Olsen just it, yet, well, but, really, but yes, I, I, my, I will woman, see what my woman is one of the best singer songwriter albums. But but all beers, so good, but all good. beers yeah. is just it, it is sadly one of those records that made me go. It went from from you know like 2016, my woman, one of my favorite albums of the year, just a, such a 180 from like I love this artist so much, I care about their work to I do not care at all about what they do. Uh, and then Big Thief for the most five out of ten band that has ever existed. Uh, I don't want even any further, comment, and, and any further I comments at the time. I can't abide by uh, that. And then less controversially, the 2020 rate. Obviously, the Fiona Apple album was great. Flea Foxes, uh, Sleepy, Fiona Bridgers, uh, mostly Sleepy, Strokes. Uh, who who care? All uh, time Sleepy Sleep. Sure is. Uh, uh, gotta say it. That's, that's, you know, that, that's, that. Jake, I, I, I love Jake too much. I can't fight Jake. Uh, I, I, Jake can Jake can say whatever he wants. Jake is Jake is the best. But um, Max, uh, our final take of the evening. Oh my! All God. right, can we please take a moment of silence for um, all the victims of <laughs> drunk driving accidents of 2020? Wow! All right, all right, we're good. Um, okay, so drunk driving is obviously bad because there are a lot of victims, um, including the perpetrators of drunk driving themselves. But <laughs> if there was a safe outlet for drunk driving, it is objectively cool as fuck. Like, tell, tell me if there was a place where you could drink like four beers and drive a car and know you could go fast as hell and not get hurt. Tell me, tell me with the straight face that you wouldn't want to go there. Do you think you they can't. let demolition derby drivers be drunk when they do that? Probably. Eh, I feel like demolition derby. There's like it depends on what kind of like it depends on the, like how it's run. If it's like a professional thing, like there's probably certain safety regulations and whatnot that you got to follow. But if it's like an amateur hour, it's like ah, yeah, go go nuts. I so I'm I, the, like, the you're Matt, going the eighty miles an hour. That Max is uh, Max has gone too far into the Rx K nephew mindset. Uh, of course, no, one of the most recent Rx K nephew albums thinking, is I've, "Make Drunk Driving Cool Again," which is an objectively funny uh, album title. It's just it's funny as fuck. I'm sorry, Maddie. If you haven't been paying attention, I've probably been posting this opinion in the Discord for like two months now. Yeah, Max. I, so, so, Max can, can I ask a question? Driving. Go ahead. Yeah, go for can it. I, um, why do you think people who drunk drive are not just trying to get from point A to point B, but actually like the activity of drunk driving? <laughs> no, no, I, no. no. I, I, I don't think they are. That's the thing. I, I think they are trying to get from point A to point B. I don't think they're trying to do it because it's cool or whatever. But I think the act of driving while slightly inebriated, because like, I'm a little drunk right now and I'm like... I, I'm not going to drive. Don't don't get me wrong. I'm not going to drive my car. But like, if there was a place where I could safely drive a car right now, <laughs> so, so like drunk I would be very cars, down for pretty it. much. So I like, think that's kind of what it that, is. That would be fun, I guess. It would be like you know, imagine like if you could race or your... bowling. I don't know. Just be another yeah. activity you could do. Yeah, exactly. 
I don't know like, if you can yeah, drink yeah, all these yeah. You're like you you go out for a night with your friends. You're like, all right, we're gonna get we're gonna get drunk as hell and drive these cars. <laughs> okay, yeah, I, I mean, sure, it sounds like a somewhat fun activity. You could do. It's like axe throwing or whatever. Yeah, like like don't get me wrong, Safe, safety is a priority here, but let like you know let's let's whip it a little bit. <laughs> Whip it real good. Oh uh, yeah. Well, uh, I'll just let Max sit with that uh, to to end this podcast. <laughs> uh, thank you, thank you, everyone, for joining us. Uh, if anyone in my work is listening to this podcast, uh, I love you all. It's a joke. Oh, Max sick. is joking. He's just joking. I'm joking. He's this, doing is, this is a parody. Uh, but thank you, everyone, for 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 listening to our takes giving feast. Thank you, everyone, for submitting uh, takes to the panel. Uh, and then what is what do we have up next on on the pod? Mm. Um, Let's see. What do we have scheduled? I think we have uh, up. Actually, I want to say our, <laughs> our next episode. Our next episode. Uh, we are going to be, I think our next one, actually, I think we're going to make this a bonus episode. Uh, so uh, on our public podcast feed, uh, we're going to have a week off. But if you want to hear a uh, an episode of the pod, uh, you know, if you if you miss out, uh, Max and Rose uh, was it you, Rose? Who who else was on that episode? It was Lily. It was us three. Us three. Uh, they have. Uh, they are linking and building. Uh, there is an Adrian Linker playlist special from from Max. So yeah, we're talking about the most five out of ten artist of all time. Yes. Uh, so that's going to be our. our it's going to be a bonus episode for our real ones patrons. Of course, you can support us for five dollars a month or more on Patreon. You get access to our real ones feed. And there uh, so also not- might be another bonus episode on the on the feed relatively soon. We just uh, we were going to record it this week and we had some scheduling conflicts. But there's a there's a very special bonus episode for any of those in this podcast uh, listening group that if you haven't heard enough West Portland talk and you didn't get enough RX nephew talk in this episode just stay tuned folks that's all i have to say yeah so again and, so december november we got we got bonus episodes coming out uh but what, what are you gonna say jake just real quick before we wrap up mm-hmm. um i'm i made an album and it's coming out tomorrow so oh, yes if, if you want to look up uh, look up dozens of cousins on spotify our, our own our own alex did the did the album artwork and it's uh really beautiful so yeah yeah all righty Bam. It's even better than Take It All Back 3.0. Gr- great stuff. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but that, that is it for, for the podcast this week. Uh, of course, join us next week if you're already a real one. If not, hey, get the, you know, support us. If not, hey, we're taking uh, a week off on the public feed. Uh, but we got we got some stuff on the way because uh, we have uh, the one after this. Uh, we've, been, we've been teasing at it. We discussed it briefly in the Halloween episode, but our, our first episode of December uh, for, for the public feed is uh, Grant is already back with a brand new playlist. Uh, it, um, it's time to go Psycho Billy mode. Grant the, has an entire Psycho Billy the, playlist. The next three three playlist episodes are us on three incredibly different versions of our bullshit. I'm very excited for all of the, the pre-end-of-year uh, episodes we have left for the rest of the year, including Jenna's uh, songs to trans your gender to, which is going to be fucking rad. Mm-hmm. So yeah, that, that 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 is that is that is what is going on with the pod. So hopefully you enjoy this episode. Uh, if you are a real one, we'll see you next week. If not, we'll see you in two weeks' time with uh, with with Psycho Billy mode. So uh, yeah, uh, bye everybody.